Bear Meadow Habitat Study Discussion, and we received a memo um, from the Reading Trails Committee. And uh, are some folks here to talk about this. Ready for me? Yeah. I'm Kim Hodder-Schlager. I'm the uh, GIS Administrator uh, for the town, and the staff person works with the Trails Committee. And if like you said, you have a, a request before you for funding for a habitat study for Bear Meadow. Uh, Bear Meadow Conservation Area is your most popular piece of land uh, the conservation areas in town. Second behind the town forest is the land that the Conservation Commission calls uh, Bear Meadow and uh, Matera together make up the most popular, and that's based on the uh, current open space plan. Uh, Bear Meadow is about 111 acres, and it's adjacent to Anderson Meadow, which is controlled by conservation, and then Fairbanks Marsh, which is a Reading Open Land Trust property. And together, that's a, over 150 acres of contiguous, protected open space along Bear Meadow Brook and the Ipswich River. So it's a real, a real resource, of both a natural resource and a recreational resource. Uh, Trails Committee was founded in 2008, and since that time, they have spent more time in Bear Meadow than anywhere else building trails um, with your commission. Uh, improving other trails, applying for grants, uh, there's a big boardwalk out there, and a, a viewing platform and an accessible trail that gets to the Matera cabin. So it's a, it's a great recreational asset. Um, but essentially no time or effort has been put into maintaining the natural resource or studying it. Um, the Trails Committee has done a little bit of pulling, uh, managing invasive species. Um, most used was probably uh, page six or seven, one of those maps. Um, but that goes back to the time with Fran Fink. Um, uh, she and I and a couple of others spent a lot of time pulling Bockthorn out there, and we've, we've managed some, uh, tried to eradicate some uh, Japanese now. We did so what the commission, the Trails Committee is requesting is about $3,000 from uh, conservation funds to hire a consultant to do a habitat study. Just of the two meadows in Bear Meadow, um, not of the whole uh, conservation area, but just sort of two meadows because that's a really rare habitat in Reading. It's essentially the only meadow habitat um, on any public land. You know, there's a couple of backyards that might compete, but they're not the same size. And then the, the open field by the water treatment plant, where the water treatment plant used to be, is mowed. It could be managed as meadow, but it is not. So what you've got in Bear Meadow is about two and a half acres now of um, old pasture or maybe orchard growing back in. Uh, so it's, it's filling in noticeably over the you know, 20 years or so that I've been out there um, and longer for some other people. We've got a couple other members of the Conservation Commission here. Um, some unusual species, not, well, uh, unusual isn't the right word, um, unusual for redding species out there. Probably the main one is the American woodcock that does its mating display in the meadows in, in March, and that's probably the coolest thing you can see outdoors in Reading. Um, but over the last couple years, they haven't been doing their display, and then presumably they're not mating there anymore. So one of the goals would be to have a consultant uh, do an evaluation of the species that are out there um, in those meadows and, and, and immediately the woods around them, uh, and do an evaluation of what species the meadows could be um, brought back to support, the American woodcock would be the one that the Trails Committee recommends. Um, Eastern bluebird, while not rare or endangered, um, nests out there in the, in the view, in nesting boxes, and that's a treat for anyone in town. That's probably the best place to see bluebirds. And then there's a vernal pool just down gradient from the meadows, and um, we know from personal experience that some of the vernal, at least one of the vernal pool species, um, lays its eggs in the upland in one of those meadows. Um, and so having somebody come in and evaluate the habitat and then making recommendations to the committee, your committee, and then together coming up with uh, um, goals for what species to habitat, to, to main, um, 
to prioritize for the meadows, and then a um, plan to hopefully cut back the meadows to a more historic uh, bounds, the south meadow. Chuck, could you advance it to the next <coughs> slide? So you can do this. Yeah. So this shows the, the darker green is tree cover, so the south meadow is pretty well bound by stone walls. Uh, and you can, you can see, you can just walk out there and see how the, the meadow keeps growing in. Uh, and then the north meadow is less well bound, but a consultant could help us either find the historic bounds of those meadows or recommend how far we might beat that back to really improve the habitat out there. Um, uh, a consultant could also uh, recommend mowing and um, you know, maybe bluebird management, uh, invasive species management, um, and help us work out um, whether recreation uses and um, habitat are, are in any conflict and how to manage that. There's a lot of dogs out there now, a lot of people walking and a lot of dogs. And I would say the meadow growing in and the number of dogs may be why the, the, um, the woodcocks are declining, but we don't really know that for sure. Let's see. Um, another outcome of the uh, proposed habitat study would be a budget estimate that we could then use to apply for a grant to have the work done in the meadow. Uh, hopefully a consultant could do a good budget estimate and also tell us what we could do as volunteers, what DPW might be able to do and then what we'd have to hire somebody to do. Um, the Mass Wildlife, or the, the Aud Mass Audubon um, Ecological Extension Service would be a logical type of a consultant to come in. They've already done some work for us at, um, in the town forest. And there's a mass wildlife habitat management grant that seems to be pretty well suited for the type of work that the Trails Committee is proposing here. Uh, but there may well be others, and the consultant can help us with that. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, and there's a, a couple of, uh, Dave Williams is here, he's an avid birder, he's on the Trails Committee, and he can give you firsthand uh, uh, evidence of the Woodcock and other mammals, uh, other species out there. Mm, roughly, how many woodcock have made it in the past up there? Any, any idea? During, I don't know which one we're going to. The I don't. Biology. I don't. But uh, how much? I've seen how as much many do as they? Five birds okay. How much? Actively chasing one another. Mm -hmm. There's probably enough habitat there for two pair, one in each meadow. That's one thing that the uh, habitat study could help elucidate is just how many pair could they support. These are uh, promiscuous creatures and they, they breed in what's like a lek where a mm -hmm. male will attract various females. So it is not like a, a cardinal in one yard and it, it, so it's possible that it could be more than two pair. But is your concern that the meadow is disappearing? Yes. Is that little orange house right down at the bottom of the south meadow? Yeah. That's my house. Okay. To the I've right lived there, to the yeah, left? Yeah, to the left. I've lived there for 20 years. Okay. And I, I personally haven't noticed the shrinking of the meadow. And it seems to do what it does every year. And I, I, I'm not saying that that's not a reason to do the study. Oh, that is a reason to, to not do the study. But it. are you concerned that the woodcock may be endangered? Um, it's or just not coming back to this particular habitat? Just not coming not back to this habitat. It, it's it, not endangered. It, but it is, a, so the, the uh, Mass Wildlife has all these fact sheets, and on the bottom of those fact sheets it says this species is on the, the state's fish and wildlife list of uh, species of most habitat it's, concern or something like that. The, sta Special the state has identified it as one of the species of greatest conservation need as, as sort of a policy, in a policy you know, to help guide us in making these types of decisions of, you know, what's, where's the greatest need, and th this particular species is one of those on the list, same as with the spotted turtle. It actually carries to New England for the woodcock, American not just woodcock Massachusetts. Is a game bird, yeah. And it's very mm -hmm. actively managed by federal and state governments in northern New England, mm -hmm. and one of their prime methods of management is to clear cut areas to, to create meadows or to bring it back and restore old meadows. And there could, be, could well be other species out there. There's just so little meadow and redding. Um, but, you know, Dave's a bird expert. I know my birds pretty well. I don't know my you know, butterflies or... Uh, I, you know, I, I've read things on, and I have 
some property up north, and its meadows are really phenomenal, but they're hard to maintain. You know, you, you, it's not just, oh, let me throw some seed down and let it go. It, it's, you've got to keep at it because there's a natural succession, and that's what you're seeing now. You know, the, the, the saplings are coming in, and then they're starting to take over. So one, one of the things you'll notice about that property, it's all very young trees, because those rock walls bound to what used to be fields where they grew stuff to eat. Mm -hmm. That was all farmland at one time. Mm -hmm. One of the questions I have is, who mows that? Who but bush hogs that? DPW does. DPW. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Under um, Chuck's guidance, once a year in the fall. Okay. I didn't uh, know who did it. I knew someone did it, but I didn't know who did it. Yeah, we, so, okay. we did it. I think it's an interesting concept. Um, uh, how did you come up with the cost of the three thousand? Um, I have reached out to the Mass Audubon um, Ecological <coughs> Extension Service and didn't hear, hear back. They charged us five thousand dollars for the study in the town, the town forest, which is uh, what, over three hundred acres. What I'm proposing here is just the meadows in the surrounding area, um, which. You know, it's about two and a half acres of meadow now. At most, we're probably talking about eight or ten acres, um, just to see what species might be using that meadow and to pull in that vernal pool that you see to the right of the meadows. Um, and also figure it's got to be enough money to be worth their while. So I don't know. That's my best guess. So, because I, I, I have a similar question, and I guess because we've got a, a somewhat a pretty established scope of work here. Uh, is that similar to what have we taken? Obviously, it sounds like you've undertaken something similar for the town forest. Right. In it the was, past. Yeah, it was it was broader. I was the person who was working with Mass Audubon on it, so I'm relatively familiar with it. It, yep. it had a lot more to do with um, managing woodlands than than meadow, yep. but it also co was concerned with um, balancing um, habitat needs and recreation. Um, I also found uh, on, on I was looking at the. Um, the Mass Wildlife Habitat Management Grant, and they had a sample uh, proposal, which was about restoring old apple orchard to encourage woodcock and other birds. Mm -hmm. And then I found some work that Mass Audubon had done in um, Lexington. I don't remember the name of the property, but it was quite similar. Um, so that's what informed uh, that piece of that proposal. Now, what was the deliverable out of the the town force one? In the end. The town ended up with a, a report uh, with recommendations for maintenance and use and treatment going forward, or um, mostly, yeah, recommendations for use and f for what areas were best um, suited for what. The, in that that oak water treatment plant field, they recommended it be brought back as habitat, for example. There uh. was no budget involved because it wasn't quite asking quite as narrow a question as as we're proposing. Is it possible that <coughs> we could get that report out? Is that sure. still available? Sure, it's on the town's website, but okay. I'll, um, I'll send the link to, to Chuck. Um, I'll just make sure it's on the town's website. Um, it's my <coughs> understanding that part of the Conservation Commission's um, mandate is to maintain those properties, and basically that's what we're asking, is that you put some active study and, and uh, a plan together to maintain one of the really unique properties. Well, that's... I, kind of disagree with you as, a, as maintenance um, because that is being maintained now by uh, active mowing. This is something else. This is this is a restoration of um, a habitat. And um, I kind of like to get at the cost of the study. Um, maybe we could get, a, maybe we could get a, uh, an actual, you know, um, an actual bid. Proposal? Yeah. Well, I think if you we, reach, I mean, if you hear from Mass Audubon, they could give you an idea I, of if we're in the questions. ballpark. I mm -hmm. mean, even if it's, uh, well, I'd like to know that. I, I'd like to go back and, yeah. and, and say, I, I, do we have, do we have this, a lot of this, or what are we using our funds for? Mm -hmm. And and are do we have restrictions on use of our funds? That would, how much funds do we have, and what, what are we required to use it for? Sure. Because usually we have so little money, I don't even ask that question. <laughs> yeah, so when this first came up, I think it started out by just uh, supplementing the Trails Committee's uh, stipend of $1,000 that they get for the town. I said you should tap the commission on, the show, on their shoulder and see if we could add a little bit to that. But 
this seemed like a better cause uh, to the Trails Committee. So um, what we have is uh, what we've been collecting. Uh, this $3,000 we cut deeply into that. Um, and the money is also used to offset my salary here in town. And they've been doing that since I got here five years ago. So that's kind of a commitment we have. So one of the things I, we don't know the, what the number is right now, but I said if, if the, the commission wanted to get into it, it's possible we could set aside a small amount each year to, to build up. So maybe in two years we'd have 3,000 yeah. bucks. I think that we don't have a whole or we could ton of money right now. But the three thousand dollar survey that reaches the kids skids for much larger investment, that's not conservation committee's responsibility. Uh, well I think these other organizations you mentioned have grants that you're gonna apply for to have that work done? Yeah. Right. That would be a second phase because we Ideally, to my mind, the habitat study would give you the rationale, would prioritize what species the, the, the land supports and that the commission is interested in, and then lay out an estimate so that we would have good ammunition to go for a, and, a grant. And I don't want to have the tail wagging the dog here, but do a $3,000 study, then you get denied your, your grants. We've kind of wasted $3,000. Is there any way you can get a kind of a wink, wink, nod, nod about this is exactly the kind of stuff we'd give you money to do if they come back with, you know, $5,000 worth of... They won't give you, they no, won't no, give no. you an okay <laughs> until you've, you've got a solid plan and They and won't even quantify or qualify the fact that it's a legitimate request? You have I to prove I think, it. I think the best you can do is take their previous grant requirements and see what they asked for last time and see what's missing from what you, you have to put together for the grant. Um, the last grant deadline That should deadline take about five was, minutes, right? <laughs> Not really. Um, and, and you know what? If you don't get it one year, you can still apply. Keep on well, it's been there for a long continue. time. So. Well, so that was part of my question is, do you have any certainty from um, um, d d d Mass Wildlife Habitat Management that they're going to renew these grants every, you know, that they're, that they're going to renew them at least for the next year or that they've you know, somebody at Mass Wildlife might have some understanding about, yes, we've always offered this grant and generally it gets reapproved every year. And um, I don't know that. In, in okay. looking at their website, it certainly seems like it's an ongoing program. They talked about the timing on previous years, yeah. you know, when the grant application uh, is to be in. Um, I would argue that it's worth doing the study even if there's no guarantee of receiving a grant because at least you then could start whittling away at um, some of the needs if you, you, know, if you wanted to restore the habitat. Mm. Well, I think, I mean, part of, I, I'm, I'm in favor of, um, you know, turning this into a more productive habitat value location, especially because it, you know, it is fairly rare in habitat, in the habitat arenas um, across the state. <laughs> I just want to make sure we do it right, and we, you know, um, and we make the best use of the money that we have available. So um, I don't know. Maybe you could get some, place some calls to the grant people and see if there's some confidence that there are going to be future grants. Mm -hmm. I actually placed one of those calls uh, for a land grant. To the today, and they basically said, "Yeah, there's going to be ongoing. This is going to be renewed next year." And so I, they said, "So go come back at another date and check up and see if it works." Um, um, if we if we need to phase this in over, if we can't approve this now because of funds, we may have to just you know work it in. But I think it's worth working in. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Um, didn't didn't the town have um, people go out and pick an area and evaluate exactly what was there for insects, reptiles, everything? Do you have that for this area? There's a biodiversity right. list. Yeah. But I don't think it's it's not specific to this area. No, not that I you remember, Dave. I don't believe it's specific. I haven't done, I haven't participated, so is it just a general, oh, here's what's in Reading, and it's not? No, 
Right, it's quite detailed. We had to make quite an effort you know, 10 <coughs> years or so ago. <coughs> That was 10 years ago? I just a guess. Maybe. It was a long yeah. time ago. It was mm. when Doug, whatever his name was, he's on the commission, and he's been deceased for a number of years. Interesting. And I, I hate to say it, but things may have changed. That's true. Too. Over those 10 years. Um, it really. Are there any organizations that you can tap into, maybe do some kind of a study like that that would be free? <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. grasping at straws here. Chuck, do you know of any? Um, um, did you have a conversation yeah, with the I, somebody? I thought that maybe uh, to kind of bring this along a little bit, you could talk to uh, some, maybe a birding group or, you know, DEP and find out what they've done in other towns. But um, it's, I, you know, I don't really have um, a lot of information on this. The, the grant seems to be, it's it's small, it's $3,000, it's not a lot of money, but for what com conservation takes in and, and how we use our money, it, it's a lot. It's a, it's a huge percentage of what we what we get each year. Is this, um, yeah. is this your only funding source? Would you need all of the money from us? Or are you looking for a portion, or you don't, you don't know? I don't have any other thoughts on where that funding would come from. I really see this as something that the Conservation Commission should be pursuing as part of your agenda. I'm happy to, um, you know, to, to take as much of a lead as I can, but honestly, this seems like a good use of your funds. Did you have a comment? I just well, have a quick comment. I, I agree with Ms. Longley. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Will Finch, 51. I agree with Ms. Longley that it's not that necessarily the Conservation Commission's responsibility to maintain the properties in town, but it is your responsibility to, to, to manage them. Um, that is definitely in, within your purview. So this, um, and I think this would be a good place to start um, working on that part of your mission. And I also, I can understand the, uh, the funding issue. I, I do recall that, you know, extra money brought in with fees was used to pay salaries. Um, I don't think that's a proper use of the funds. It should be used towards managing property in town or other, you know, conservation-specific needs. Um, you know, your salary should be coming from well, we can't fight everybody for one project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's pretty, it's pretty much established. I can, I can see where this is going. Um, I, I, and I, not, not to disagree with what you're saying, I do think our responsibility to manage these areas is, 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 is accurate, but managing doesn't necessarily infer the injection of cash to solve a supposed problem. And I, I know it's kind of like, well, what came first? So how do you determine there's a problem with, you know, best money in it? But like Chuck said, it's a lot of the little bit of money we have. And we can certainly work with DPW to, in their mowing program, to you know, expand the areas you can mow every year. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So, so I, what I would just offer is, I, I think this is an inter interesting proposition. I, I do, do agree with you, Becky, that well, A, currently this is this would be a, a large chunk of funding, but there may be a possibility to fund this over time or figure out other ways to collect funding. I, I would actually offer to work with you to over the next month to try to find other op other opportunities to find, you know, get this funded or to get something similar in place where it's taking less of a hit or at least look at the conservation's numbers and see what we could dedicate each year to help build a fund to this study and knowing that it may be you know, very limited, but at least understand what we could. Um, I, I've, because I, I think this is a, a, an interesting proposal interesting. and I, I think it, there's value to it. It's, you know, I don't think the, the money's there. I don't think I, I would propose just pr providing that now, but I, I certainly would like to look, look into it more. And, and you know what I also agree with on, on that 
thought, Mike, is that there seems to be numerous studies that go on for individual cause or purpose, all designed to help, you know, preserve and, and keep healthy habitats there. It'd be nice if we had one kind of a study that we could continue to donate to that would do these perpetual kind of investigations to say this is working, this is working, this is working. So it would be kind of like perpetual overseeing and maintenance without having to deal with this every time it comes up. Absolutely. I mean, exactly. I, I imagine that if we're successful at getting this done, that this will not be the last time that somebody comes before us and says, right. well, look how valuable it was to get this information. Sure. And what, what, when can we do the next one? Yep. Um, so it would be great to understand how we could help fund those type of situations or what we could at least figure out or what are the options or alternatives to get those funded. Um, One of the other options that we might have here too is, is to reach out to uh, institutes of higher learning, uh, universities like that. UMass Amherst does this all the time out in, in uh, western part of the state with their environmental studies okay. classes and that could be a low or no cost uh, way of doing this for this project. Um, and I know that Northern Essex Community College has an environmental studies program. I don't know whether they'd be able to do it or, or uh, Essex idea. Aggie. Essex, Essex Aggie, Aggie has, has that also as an environmental done. studies program. Yeah. So, you know, this would be right up their, their alley for doing that, and it's fairly close. So um, that might be another avenue to get this that might be the low or no cost that's, to actually get this performed. That's how I was thinking that as well. I, I think that's a good opportunity. I do think... I mean, Mass Audubon is, is somewhat similar to those where, I mean, yeah. the cost is really low relative yes, to what very it much would so. be. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, again, uh, it, all the options and all alternatives, yeah. I mean, we, should, we should understand and, and look at it, so. The other thing I just thought of is that on rare occasions, you know, the developers is having an impact on a particular resource area and they're required to mitigate in some other part of the town, perhaps one, you know, use mm -hmm. of the mitigation would be to a, you know, a fund that would do work like this. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's another good idea, Will, and I mean, we, we've had, we were just talking not that long ago, but we've had success with our tree policy uh, recently in building up as, as people have come before the commission to look for tree removals, they can either do a replacement or, or donate to the tree fund. Now, the, the tree fund is not in the Conservation Commission's hands, but it's been a, a great vehicle to help promote growth elsewhere. Um, so something similar to that would, would be, sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think, you know, we talked about a lot of a lot of different ideas. I think we just need to like kind of condense all these. Maybe start looking at some of these schools, and then come back to the commission with some hard numbers, and maybe what can happen <coughs> through the DPW department. Um, you know, if they're willing to do that, and and through um, I guess the trail committee. So, I just last comment. One of the things that seems kind of obvious to me is given the fact that these walls were put there so people could farm the land, you can kind of make a pretty logical guess as to where the, the historic boundary of the mm -hmm. meadow was post homes being built. You know, I mean, that what you got is what you got. The, the, the stone walls have been there for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. I just, to my mind, while well, I can read a fact sheet on the American Woodcock and tell you what's good habitat, or we can cut the woods back if we had, say, DPW Forestry doing it. To me, that doesn't add up. Your best effort and mine, and Essex Aggie High School students <coughs> have best effort, doesn't add up to <coughs> a proper study, enough knowledge brought to bear. But I will definitely follow up with um, Mass Audubon, Mass Wildlife, and uh, you know, some other really good ideas here. Well, keep in mind a lot of people that are teaching these kids are experts in their field, so it's not like you're getting a shoddy effort. These kids are developing new skills for their yeah. elected, you know, subjects. So. Yeah, I just want to take a chance to thank the Reading Trails Committee for, um, I rarely do this congratulatory thing that other boards do, but I just want to thank you guys for bringing this before us because 
in our day to day in our week to week permit applications, we rarely get a chance to stop and think about the the part of our mission that has to do with uh, maintaining the lands we have. So, thanks for this, and thanks for putting it on our table. You're welcome. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a request for determination of applicability, 2017-13197 Havel Street, Map 35, Lot 106, Gomez property. Um, did you, some of you went out to the site? We yeah. did, we have site visits on Monday. And, um, and according to the map, um, we saw the wetland line, <laughs> It, it wasn't delineated out there, but the wetland line is pretty much along the southern fence, proposed fence boundary, and the southeast corner. Um, but when you get kind of to the top of that southeast corner, you're pretty much out of wetlands and you're starting to get into uplands. So um, I think the applicant is proposing to put a privacy so a tall, you know, totally blocking fence in the front, along the front, whatever, wherever it faces Haverhill, but along the back it was going to be chain link. Yeah, I actually had a hard time. I, I know you said it was the, the black line, and I could see it um, on the front and going along the top side, but I was confused in the back. It says no fence. No fence, no fence, no fence, but I see a black line. See, my understanding is it's the red line. Yeah, yeah that's it's, it's the red, red line is no okay. fence. Right. So it's a little bit, yeah. even so you kind of oh, ignore okay. the words that say yeah. line and black will be fence. Ignore that. Okay. So it's, it's the, the red, red line. Red line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that cleared up the confusion. Um, and so... The wetlands is just so the fence is proposed at the ex edge of lawn, and um, there'll be openings along this area, along the wetland area. That's the opening, I yep. understand, is going to be um, in the east upland part, mm -hmm. as described by Mr. Gomez. Any questions from the commission? No, I thought it was, I, I was at the safest. I thought it was pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah I thought so as well. Chuck, pretty straightforward. Did you, okay. did you have anything? No, it's uh, pretty standard with what we've allowed um, with a fence on the edge of lawn, you know, right up against the trees or the forest. And um, in this case, it's in the back. There's actually an area where it could extend a little bit further, but that's, that's not needed. It's a pretty big piece of property and uh, that's, a, that's a lot of fence but um, there would be you know more land that they could fence off so that's that's pretty good and is this all vinyl or chain link also? Uh, the back, all in the back is chain link. Uh, so the chain link fence allows the animal passage without having to bring it off the ground. I understand they have a they have a dog and who hangs out pretty well in the yard and stays dog. under control, but this is, uh, you know, Haverhill Street's a pretty uh, mm. busy street, yeah, and uh, you never know what can what can happen. Uh, there, I think there's three openings in the fence. Is it three or just, uh, just two? Just two. So one on the side <laughs> by the driveway? By the driveway, then towards and, the back. And then one in the back, and the applicant understands, um, you know, about yard waste and, and all mm -hmm. that there, and, and there is none um, yeah. back there. So, uh, also a lot of trees nice, back there nice big the property house. to take care of. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion for a negative determination. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very friendly. Um, the 720 Anrad 270 no DEP yeah. number. 1503 Main Street, Map 60, Lot 11 and 12, Cast Castellano. Um, we are not, I guess, discussing that tonight, is that correct? 
Uh, at the last minute, we got a request to continue. <coughs> um, first, they would like to schedule a site visit. Uh, the beginning of the week. This is the sign for this, this last. Um, this is 1503 Main Street. Sorry. 1503. Yes. 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 Next to uh, Matera Cabin. Yeah. So this is uh, what we just. Uh, RDA, yep. So if you guys could sign that. So at the last minute, we got a um, uh, last minute phone call from Steve Erickson, and he says that his um, his applicant or the applicant, the owner, uh, would like to. Uh, keep the line where it is and that every flag needs to be looked at um, with their consultant to make sure that we, uh, you know, that they're placed properly. So they weren't willing to do what we were believed to be, which is to move everything up to the contour line, the 97 contour line. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, and uh, we're going to be looking at that. So Steve's asked for us to come up with a uh, date after 10 o'clock in the near future where we can all meet him out there and discuss 40 plus flags so it's going to be a long time and then um wow. we're 40 plus flags and the, the do you know what's going on now vegetation i send this to you okay. so you're all set oh, okay. awesome. yeah thank you so are they uh, okay to start it's more exciting if you want to stay. It's 40 plus flags, and the weather conditions we've obviously gotten ourselves. I know Steve typically does things off of vegetation. We typically like to look at vegetation. We're going to be doing a lot of probes, I guess is the, the point. Um, it's going to be uh, 40 plus flags out. 40 plus flags in this condition is probably uh, more than a. <laughs> so, Chad, um, where did you, those who went out on the site visit, uh, and I apologize, I was South America. Don't apologize. Out of the country. What yes, I was out of the country. Um, um, where did you want it to go up or down for the closer are you asking me so there were some everybody there were some line, there were some locations that seemed like they were uh on the high side but there were several locations that seemed on the low side and what the general consensus that i think the the many of us had while we were out there was that the 77 continent 72, line? 72 with, with a couple of exceptions yeah. especially in the eastern in this area from about this area down um, the 72 was not sufficient. Yeah, the 72 contour got a little weird it in one got, location. Like, from here, that was a bizarre. On plan, I we, did couldn't, not we couldn't see find that, that in the field. But by near Wetland Flag 20A, I didn't see that little mm -hmm. stick out. And also, it was counter. It just didn't make sense to me that these contour lines continued straight in the eastern part, but the wetland lines curved. So really, I think these top topography lines are a little bit off down here. Chuck, what did you? <coughs> um, I'm just reminding the chair that we continued this hearing. Oh, okay. Oh. So I guess we can't. So oh. can't talk about this. Sorry. So we but we're looking to set a date. Yes. We'd like to. That's what we've been asked. Set a date for a site visit in the near future. The next meeting is January 10th. Okay. Yep. Mm. Yeah, we, we don't know the weather conditions. We don't have vegetation. It's, it, I'm, my confidence that we're going to get to an agreeable line out of 40 some odd points. Uh, my confidence is not high. I'm not saying it's impossible. So, I, I rather think than despite the despite it not being high, because I, I don't disagree with you, Nika. But if the applicant would like us to to show, you know, would like a date prior to the next meeting or around the next meeting, I think we owe it to him to go out. And if we disagree, we disagree. And if it needs to continue from there, it needs to continue okay, from there. Let's let's, uh, let's pick a date. I mean, yeah. Um, Anytime after ten next week. But uh, just to jump ahead for a second, th there's a meeting uh, on the agenda that we're going to have to have a special uh, 
conservation meeting during the day next week also I need four members to show up um, we'll, you'll hear about that later but rem just remember we're definitely doing what I just talked about right. so this site visit could happen in the next two weeks okay I, I would say the sooner the better I do too um, I could do Friday of next week I could do Thursday of next week Thursday is not good Thursday is the day of the meeting at the library Correct. That's not until 3.30, the open meeting law. Open no, meeting. I, I don't want to spend the whole day. I when know. we go out to 15.03, we're going to be there a long time. And the meeting at the library is from 3 to 6.30, so yeah. this is a volunteer is position, not a full-time job. So, What about what, next Wednesday? Next week is shot. I'll just, I can say it. Next week is shot for me. Shot. Yeah. So it's, it's unlikely that... Um, but we'll be having the special conservation meeting on Monday because probably tomorrow and Monday I'd, I'd be writing this, you'd be reviewing it, and then Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday's uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah, thank you. Yeah, you can't, so nothing can happen on Tuesday for a meeting. So that's a good day for a site visit, but not a meeting. So next week is shot for me. What I would say is, uh, you know, I am Becky, uh, I value your wetland. Like, me to look at it, I'm, I'm kind of like along for the ride. Sometimes. You're well in need. <laughs> <laughs> I value your well in need too. <laughs> your, your ability to, to fight with Chuck to delineate <laughs> with the <laughs> vegetation and yeah. Um, so I would not base it off of what I would love to get there, but it, don't base it off of my schedule. And Inka, what's your schedule next week? Well, are I, you around Thursday Tuesday? and Friday are are the best. I do have other things going on Monday through Wednesday, but I can rearrange those. Thursday. So I'm going to say I'm available. Can you can't do it Thursday? But you guys are saying that there's another meeting at 3.30. Oh, that's, that's the meeting. You know, that's, that's a lot. The that's a the lot. Yeah. Just, and I have a meeting, just, okay. just to okay. add to that, I have a meeting that same evening at 6.30. So yeah, Thursday's out of, off the table. You know. That I'm going to be so in meetings from six, Tuesday, three thirty, and no three thirty until ten. I I just don't want to do it's it. Not a red bill day for you. What are you no. retired or something? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Is Tuesday doable? Tuesday. Tuesday. Dave. I believe so. That's the twelfth. Yeah, Tuesday's okay with me for the site visit. Starting That's at, what we're talking about at, at this time. Like ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, something like no, that. No, earlier the better. Can't be earlier I, than 10. I, okay. I can only stay till 2. All right. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, I don't know how. Don't Hopefully, know. that's not the oh. deal here. Oh. <laughs> They're predicting I mean, snow on Tuesday. We spent two hours out there. Depends <laughs> on when it is. I was going to tell you that. Bound to change, minute, I mean. Yeah. Yep. Who knows? You don't ha I mean. You think we're going to come to a it's story? it's it's harder with an anrad because you don't know what's going on but if there was a, a proposal you could look at you could just look at the closest flags but i do think they're with looking at the site plan that towards the back there are flags that make absolutely no sense and i'm not sure we'll review those so they're way above the 97 contour line and i don't even think steve agrees with them so we can discuss this when yeah we're so they there. might be just, you know where the where the inlet was, so maybe twenty feet beyond that. Okay. So Tuesday, uh, ten o'clock. Okay. Yep. All those in favor? Okay. Tuesday at ten. Right. Cool. Um. So now we have a notice of intent two seventy dash zero six nine four seven thirty eight Pearl Street, Lot fifty six, Lot eight. Fitzgerald, and I have to read the speech. Yep, the public mm -hmm. hearing for this project is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. Commission will receive reports from administrator, technical advisor, other town departments. 
commission will address questions and comments to the applicant and the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and those questions should be directed to the chair on the chair please when you do that please give your name and address before your comments and questions are presented and hopefully everybody signed the attendance sheet uh, in the back and uh, this time I'd like to introduce members of the Commission starting on my right Robert Hayes David Panette Rebecca Longley chair Anika Scanlon vice chair Michael Flynn Jack Gironi, Conservation Administrator. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Mike Fitzgerald. This is my wife, Kelly. Uh, Kelly. We have, have the proposal before you tonight. Uh, these are the plans of Mr. Ross with the seats for the certified. Okay. I can pass those off you. So uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Reading. Uh, we, my wife and I have owned the house on Pearl Street for almost 12 years now. Uh, we have three kids, and the house is getting small. <laughs> We're running out of space. So uh, having said that, um, we're proposing, in addition to the house, uh, a slight uh, expansion of the paved driveway and a new deck off the back. Uh, the proposal of the addition would be a two-car garage to the left of the house, with a great room above it, and then in, in addition off the back of the existing house um, with a kitchen, a slash living area, and then a deck off the back. Um, we had Norris Environmental Service come out and del delineate the property, and we also had Jack Sullivan uh, prepare the uh, lot plan we see before you. Uh, uh, no trees that are to be cut down at all uh, for the project. And there is limited site grading that's required. It's less than a foot grade change throughout uh, the project. Um, we have a drywall that's proposed in the back of the property, as you can see before you, uh, to collect the infantry runoff from the proposed addition. Um, the construction route to the rear of the property is shown on the left-hand side of the drawing. That would be to access the backyard area. Uh, we proposed a 12-inch uh, diameter mulch sock for erosion control. The yard's pretty <laughs> flat. I know the members of the board went out there to walk the property the other day. I wouldn't expect any erosion from the project at all. And um, the next thing I'll mention is the, the, the closest point of, of the proposed deck to the wetlands <coughs> is 42 feet from the wetlands itself. So uh, having said that, um, the information that you guys have before you. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot. Hi. Um, thanks for that. And um, your existing house um, does it have um, does it have a, a basement you can stand up in? Yes. A house? Any water problems? No, we've never had water at all. Okay. Um, I ask that because I see you're proposing the concrete dry well. I don't suppose you know, and I'm not expecting you to, but I thought I had to ask. I don't suppose you know the dimensions of that structure and... Uh, I, I, off the top of my head, I'm going to guess, and I think it's a pretty good guess. I think it's uh, anywhere from 8 to 10 feet long, uh, 4 feet tall, I believe, and uh, 6 feet wide, maybe. It's 1,000 gallons. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'm just um, thinking about how does the placement of that dry well um, relate to the depth to groundwater in that area? Because for it to be an effective dry well, you got to be out of the groundwater. Sure. And so I'm just think, just trying to get without getting official surveyed information from you, just trying to get a sense about whether that dry well is going to be an effective. Sure. Uh, you know, this is all new to me is, uh, sure. you know, uh, no, going forward with this. I, I don't know, and I'd be looking to get the board's view on it as well, if if a dry, if the drywall could be removed and just stone would be added in the depth of sort of like a leaching field. I'm not sure if that would apply to this. Um, I don't know if, if what you're talking about would. would Did you uh, talk to Jack Sullivan about that? Yes, and he, uh, so Jack was saying that, you know, this is current up to date of what sometimes is requested from the board that a dry well goes in. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, we, we don't get water on the property at all. 
Um, I know that you know the, the conservation area behind there. I rarely see water behind there unless it, you know there's a heavy rain. And I would propose that um, if the concrete structure could be removed and just the hole as uh, proposed would be filled with stone, I think it would be a, a better option for a say, leaching field. I don't know if that's a correct terminology. Than actually the stone, um, I'm sorry, the concrete there, structure. There are different ways to, to create an infiltration system. There are different, I'm, I'm not going to design one for mm -hmm. you because that's not. Sure, no, no. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm just, I'm just wanted to sort of ask that question. Does this type of, um, I'm in favor of the infiltration um, because there is um, additional impervious area being built <coughs> on this lot. Correct. So we're going to try and, I, I want to see additional infiltration of that area. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of ways to do that. Sure. And, and with a lot, and there's, you name it, for whatever system, you know, where groundwater is high, like over by uh, Bertucci's, they have an un unbelievably, under those parking spaces, they have an incredibly vast, shallow infiltration system. Where they take all their infiltrate all their water, and they infiltrate it back into groundwater underneath that pavement, and it's very shallow. You know, there's other places where there's a real depth to groundwater, where they put in a big. They don't have to put something shallow sure. and laterally expansive in. Right. You know, so I'm this just is the asking the question. By, by Jack Sullivan. Yeah. So, and I know he's versed with you know these types of things. This is again new to us, but that's. Because I because I want something that's going to work. Sure. Do you know if Jack did any kind of um, poll to to see if there was uh, depth to groundwater? Do you? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think so. One of the reasons why there's a tank here is, as we can see, on the <coughs> the corners of of your proposed addition, this is to take the the conductors from the ra the roof, yes. and that's right. going to go directly in there. If you have a real heavy rainstorm. If you just had crushed stone there, that would bubble over. Okay. The tank actually contain you can put that water that will take that rush of water, and then the crushed stone that's around the tank then it, that leaches it into the ground okay. at a slow rate. So that's, that's why you no. wouldn't use just crushed stone. It's just a lot. The tank it's a lot larger volume. Right. Mm -hmm. You take the, the the immediate volume of a of a heavy rainstorm that would go right in that tank, and then it. It'll take its time chelating, uh, percolating out of the tank into the groundwater. You know, I, I certainly another, can't. another way to look at it is a capacitor. Yes. Temporary storage. Yeah. We certainly can't speak for Jack, but I mean, he's he's usually pretty good and yeah. conservative yeah. With, with what he yeah. puts in and, and fair with what he puts in. And he usually comes before us and says, so oh, this site, we couldn't get it in because the groundwater was too high. So, so if you wouldn't um, mind, you know, staying with his design, oh, I think no, he'd be safe. Yeah, absolutely. I would say he's the engineer, right? To, Get your expertise, knowledge on. on yeah, uh, he's well, the engineer of record. I mean, we, if, it, if there was something else to offer, he, I mean, he may may know, but I would go with what he offered. The one thing he usually includes, like an O and M plan and, and a detail of, mm. with the tanks, doesn't he? I mean, we, we usually for a notice of intent, don't we usually request an O and M? Yeah, before we get the the. Uh, uh, there is order some check on a single family home. The order conditions, we get that. There is some maintenance associated with this, right? One of the things <laughs> is when you look it's at the, be, you, you, you know, on the back of your house, you only have about three them, feet of not be a bald foundation it's sticking out. It would be easy so to do. So if you have, you like know, full basement, like full, basement, full height basement, you know, when this was four feet high, the bottom of this tank is not going to be really hardly any difference between the bottom of the tank and the the foundation the, but at the top of your, your floor in your right, basement, right, so exactly. it'd be pretty close. Well, it, if it wouldn't be like Jack to put a consideration for design in there that wouldn't pass muster anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So like he typically doesn't. Yeah, we would be fine with what Jack proposed. I don't, I don't know. Jack We'd Jack be right. more sure if there was a test pit, so yep. Jack is guessing. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Well, if you take the spot elevations, you know, um, the spot elevation near flag 4A is 9588. There's no test bit. We don't know where groundwater is. But if, if you look at the wetland line, um, so you have 9588 by 4A. Say that 4A, backwards and you'll answer your own question. You're all already you up to 98.2. And you're at 98.2. It's required. You have the tank. 
I mean, got four feet. That's two on the plane. Yeah, this he said it was about four feet deep. Yeah, yeah. I yeah so have so any indication of <coughs> that somebody did it past on the plane. Well, that's more. That's, oh, that's, that's not less than four feet. Never have difference though. Like, mm. <laughs> right up, it's ninety-five nine to ninety-eight two. That's low meta. Where are you? You're, you're ninety-five. At four A is ninety-five eight eight. That's right. So we're talking a difference of two point three yes, feet. That's one house. Mm. Elevation. Oh. That's for the wetland flag. flag. Yeah. Between flag four A. One of them. So if if we're um, about two feet elevation difference. Green Street. There's not much room to yeah. put. An infiltration in two feet. Really? Yeah. Oh, they have. He said he doesn't get any water in his basement, and, and he's got well, the, he's got like only three of feet of he only got three feet of foundation showing in the back of the house. That means he's got five, five feet, feet in the basement. Right. So. So it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Chuck, do you have any comments? I didn't know where we left off. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I distracted him. We were doing best being, guess on this. Someone was giving me instructions as we were doing this. Talking about O and M, and then we're talking about pit determined groundwater, but we were kind of having a discussion among ourselves. Thank you. Well, when I when I was dry. out on the site, I, I, I mean, this is pretty typical of what we approve, um, and the only questions that came up when we were on the site is where the stone wall is, and I can see that that was that was uh, drawn in. And where the base of the slope is, I can see that line starting from the shed going over to 1A. Um, surprised <laughs> from where it is that's, at 1A. That's not the base. That's uh, the edge of lawn, though. Is that what it says? The edge of lawn? Yeah. <coughs> yes. Is he? So is the edge of lawn? The edge of lawn was at the top. So those slags can't be at the top of the. Well, they would be just down, right? They would be on the middle of the. Yeah, they're just yeah, down. That's slope. a 1 to 20 scale. So we're talking. Yeah, so those we're ones. We're only talking like two feet there. From the, I mean, isn't that essentially what it was? Here's the one to 20 scale. So, sorry. Well, anyways, I'm still surprised that the, the edge of lawn is where the flag uh, 2A, 1, 2, 3, 4 are. But even if it was five feet up, which probably is what would be the maximum width of that slope, you sh you're still 61 feet away. Mm -hmm. So right. it makes, right. you know, right. I, I think with the infiltration, uh, what we're looking at and erosion control, it's, it's not much. I don't disagree. And, and for RDA, it's typically not a problem. But for a notice of intent, we're verifying this line, right? So this line is going to be valid for anything in the future for three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's valid mm -hmm. for three years. It's it's actually was delineated in 2015. Okay, so it's three years from the date it was actually delineated, not from our. No, approval. no, we'll approve it with this if, with if this order, and then it'll be three years. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm questioning where, where that line is. We, we don't have to agree to flag 1A, 2, 3, 4, if someone feels that that's likely. I, 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 think yeah. those, I think one of the problems with agreeing with flags 1A through 4A is the amount of yard debris that's in that area. There's, mm -hmm. There are a lot of leaves. I sunk in a little bit when I stepped off the lawn. Um, so there's a substantial amount of yard, de you know, leaf debris well, between the edge of the lawn. that, too. Yeah, that's going to have to mm -hmm. get taken out. Um, so, um, so that said, that's why it's hard to really have certainty with those those spots. That said, there's about, I would say, if and. Tell me what your sense was when you were on the site visit. Seemed to be about a foot elevation difference at least between what looked like the base of slope for that between the grassed area and the wetlands. At least a foot. At least a foot difference. So there was there was some clear difference between the lawn and the wetland area. But where exactly that wetland line flag should be. 
I think it was it was a little bit it was a little hard to verify in the field. Other than what That's it says here on the basically the existing tree line, even though there's no trees there, that said ninety six six seven and down the base of the slope and behind the flags it's ninety four six nine. That's two feet. It's you know, clearly there was a big difference in elevation change between where the yeah. edge of lawn and, and where the wetland was. So and the other thing is is it really doesn't matter how we move that from one A to six A. Um, you know, could move that in twenty feet and he's still not within the thirty five foot, so that's really a moot point. We're, we're trying to figure out how we can approve the wetland line and notice of intent, even you saying don't approve it? I would say that yeah, it's difficult at this point. Uh, you know, it appears at this point that it's just downslope of the of the edge of lawn. Um, you know, the flags weren't weren't present. Um, I think the only two flags that I saw over in the corner were was it six A and seven A? Yeah. And then the other ones from one A to five A no, weren't we existent. So it seems like uh, ninety four would be the base of slope, right? Yep. And 96 is the, the top. Yeah. And the flags appear to be, I don't know, halfway up, yeah. a little less. But they also appear to be the original uh, uh, Norse environmental flags, because I was comparing them before. So the flags, Jack didn't move the flags, which I can understand why he wouldn't. Um, but it just tells you where they are. But uh, I guess we didn't have the opportunity to see flag one through five, because they weren't there. We saw six and seven. I think eight and nine were missing, and then maybe 11 and 12 were there somewhere. If I could just speak for one second. I remember three years ago when Norse Environmental came out, and I believe the flag either 4A or 5A is still present out there. Um, I, don't, I don't know which one it is, but I believe one of those is still present. If you follow the line from 6A going Backwards, 5A, 4A, it's, it's pretty consistent with the straight line yep. that runs along the back where I think the, the end of the slope is where you're talking about. So I, I will agree with you that, you know, over three years the flags are, you know, uh, gone in the wind, so to speak. But it's easy to see, I think, from the drawing. And if you guys were out at the site the other day and saw 5A or 6A or whatever when you saw it, it the, the line of the flag markers is, is pretty straight across the back of the property. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to see it from the, the edge of the grass and then the downslope. So it's it's uh, not too difficult to delineate where I think where the flag should be, but it's just not there. <coughs> so what am I hearing? I guess so we need, uh, I, I think it's typical, with getting back to the flags, what, what can we do? What are they going to change if they were there? Yeah. Well, assuming they were put in the right place at the right time by Norris, I mean, at, at the time. Well, but I mean, it's just like <laughs> what we're doing with the, yeah. And I'm only asking, I don't, I don't so know. So we're going like to 1503 Main Street to, to look at every single flag and make sure that every single one so of those locations so is correct. Okay, so when Other, you... Another, so we do that on any site. So we, sure. we don't just assume that the location that they... Well, put. Chuck asked the question. I was just wondering what the options of, what, what is the... How so does it impact what we're trying to resolve, I guess? So when you, when you were on the site, those locations, are those plausible? It, it sounds like there's something at the base or they're up a little bit. Did you look at the vegetation? And From what I'm looking at here, I, I, I think that, yeah, they, they could be right. I think it could be right on, you know, the line, foot here or there, you know, professional judgment. Okay, if it's a foot here or there, that's margin of error. Too, um, and you are also uh, quite a ways away from the wetland. I would agree. So, should we approve the line or not? That's, I mean, I think ultimately. That's the challenge. But are you saying that it's <coughs> close enough? I'm asking you. I wasn't on the site. 
Yeah, I, I'm asking your professional judgment. Was it, in your opinion, a plausible location? Even though you haven't got the, the flags, it's pretty, <laughs> like you it, said, it's a pretty straight was. long line. That's what the problem was. Yeah, I would accept this plan. The plan looks better than what I saw on the field. Yeah. I mean, we didn't understand where the flags would be in the field. And in particular, I, one through I four, would only I offer up that if, if the topography was pretty radical, if you had some serious slope considerations or some real water problems, that there might be some justification for thinking the flags aren't where they're presented here. Other than that, I can't have, why else would, they wouldn't have moved. So I guess part of my question is how did um, how did Jack Sullivan put those 2015 flags on this recently surveyed plot plan? So this uh, three years ago we started this endeavor yep. of yep. trying to accomplish this. Um, Jack Sullivan and Norris Norris Environmental came out around the same time. Uh, Norris Environmental came out, uh, put the flags on the property. And then Jack came out and surveyed it and was able to locate the markers, I believe, on the plot plan. Back in, back in uh, 2015 or early 2016. Correct. And then the, the, the plot plan that you have before you today is an updated version because we had to show the rock wall on the right-hand side okay. and the, I believe it's the edge of the lawn. Um, uh, okay, in the back. In the back. So that... So it's a... Okay. I guess it's a combination of both, but this is the most updated thing and I can... Okay. Be honest with you, the flags haven't changed from either plan. It's the same, the plan that was in 2015, and yeah. the same the plan that is now. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, it came out about three. Well, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. I don't think that's 2018. No. Going ahead of my We're head. almost there. Two years. We're almost yeah. there. One with that. Long um, day, sorry. Start to lose the next. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel so, something similar. So, so I look at this. Based uh, on I, I look at this, and I just say, you know, it. it 1A through 5A uh, seem to be, considering where the edge of lawn is and where, the, where Jack is taking these surveyed contour points, it seemed to be exactly where I would have thought they would have been. I, I have difficult understanding what, you know, the, the behind the shed, 6A and 7A are di were pretty difficult. And then the line, 8 to 10A, I Very thought long. was pretty clear. So what what was the difficulty with six and seven A? Ah, uh, well, one was clearly uh, on like a flat area prior to the slope, you know. As as opposed to being up slope, yeah. which yeah. the rest of the flags were. But, so, it, so but the problem is we're looking at a flag that's th three years old. Two years. Two years. Old. Two. <laughs> two. Yeah. I was waiting. <laughs> you were waiting, waiting for that. Uh, two years old, and uh, you know they don't stay in the same spot sometimes. But so I mean. If someone came, if someone said, "Well, just get rid of six and seven and just go from five to eight for purpose of this project," I don't know. I'm eight. Bad night. Well, I think a French curve and might solve the problem, not a straight yeah. line. <laughs> but it, it's still not going to make a difference with. It's the, still not going to make no. a difference it's to the line. So it's going yeah. right. to be but in the favor of the conservation commission right. because we're not going to be putting something further into the wetland that it may right. not need to be. It's Correct. not going to impact this project. It's a, right. it's a way to get them something with this, what's shown on the plan. Right. Um, How about s eliminating seven? Yeah. Because five seems to take a real good cut out of the corner. That's fine. I, I'm fine if, with if eliminating seven. Eliminate if, if that's seven, the eight. one that you were good. It was I, did, I think it better. brings it in right into the margin of error. Okay. Okay. Is applicant amenable to that? Yeah, sure. Bas basically, all we need to it do doesn't change your setbacks. Yeah. It doesn't no. change your. So we need to approve as part of the minimum permit distances. application. We need to approve where the where we found the wetland. Sure. The, the area that's con that is confusing us was this, and the flags weren't out there. So what we're proposing is to just draw the line from here to here. And leave that, this that's not an issue. And yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. So the list of conditions, uh, oper operation and maintenance plan, prior to that meeting that we'll set up. So Jack's going to come up with something. It'll be easy. He'll have he'll have something. Um, the yard waste removal is going to be part of the order of conditions. So you have to do that with, with your project. Talking on the uh, back part of the leaves. Seems like the looks around. Yeah. One through four. Yeah, one, one through, through three. three. 
that area. Or four. Or one through four. So that that's going to be um, the way that's handled is you do it, and then we verify that what we were talking about, because your idea and our idea might be different. Sure, but these guys... Well, they're doing uh, it. They're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we just go out and verify it. Make sure that by the time you get, yeah. to, you get to your certificate of compliance... Yes. <laughs> Are we going to require it. some plantings as well along that slope? They, the slope is pretty bare in that back area. And if that yard waste is getting taken out, you could have bare soil. Does it need to be planting? Just it be throw them over your neighbor's yard. Seeding. Yeah, what, what's wrong with seeding? You can put a rake uh, on the, on is, the dog's is tail. I just want to introduce the idea of plantings along. I would encourage to planting. That area. I don't know that it's required. I would encourage yeah. at least. The, uh, well, to prevent invasives flying in. Yeah. Are there any questions from the community? What type of seed? Uh, herbaceous mix. Any what questions from the community? Okay. No. New England upland seed mix. Is that what you want? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Or you could do a wildfire mix. It might be a little bit easier. Yeah, and the kids could pick the flowers. Or you could, you could just do some grasses. Mm. I mean, whatever. I, I just want to hear from you guys because yeah, well, each I'm, thing I'm is going to be a different cost. I think grass, you know? is, grass is fine. I, I think grass. Grass. Okay. herbaceous cover is, is the way to go on that slope. Yeah. Upland seed mix, 100 bucks a pound I'm hearing in the audience. Oh, 100 bucks a pound? Well, that sounds pretty Probably good. Probably less than that. Uh, you could do a wildflower mix or you could do... I don't think we need shrubs is what I'm saying. I don't think we need... It's, it's a small slope. I think, I think, we, should leave, I think we should leave it up to the applicant, whether they want grasses or flowers. Thank you, Dave. So there you go. Fine with that. So we'll have a condition that that area is vegetated and grown in mm -hmm. yeah. prior, yeah. prior to, to issuing the certificate of compliance. Yep. Yeah. We've always had. Yeah. Okay. So you'll What's the timeline of the certificate of compliance? Yeah, that, that, that's, that might be an issue because we're Spring. looking to get started on this as soon as possible. So if we do have that, a... That part no. can happen within three years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so right. you could do your <clears throat> addition, concentrate on the work, the building project, and then this part. Well, you'd have to, I mean, you have the equipment there, so you'd, you'd clean that out right. now. Right. And then two things may happen. Um, we're asking for it to be vegetated. So if you wait long enough, volunteer vegetation may grow in. As long as it's not invasive, it could stay. Or you could supplement anything that grows with some sort of seed that you've picked out, you know, whether it's grass or whatnot. But it is going to be a wet area, so some of the grasses may not come in. And it's shaded, too, of course. He's got some plant lists at his office. That yeah, no, I was just concerned that you wanted the plants to grow by the spring, and I was like, no, oh, no, wait, no, 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 it's December, no, 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 it's December. No, 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 you get yeah. the slow growing version, you've got three years. <laughs> We're not gonna, unless it's a <coughs> So, you need to, uh, you need to get in touch with Jack Sullivan to get an operations and maintenance plan, it doesn't have to be extremely uh, Specific, detailed. Specifically for the dry one. Right. And, um, Do you want him to remove flag 7? Get the, yep. Get the plan back. We need a plan that has 7A removed Con and connected. So 6A six needs six to, to connect to 8A. Okay. And you don't have to change the numbers. Just take 7A out. I'll just move 7 in. Mm. Straight up. If you can, just move 7 yeah. in. You can't really because the no, original delineation well, was flag <laughs> seven. <laughs> so I, you can't. I know. Just, I just, just looking, somebody's going to look back on an old drawing and go, that's not there. We've done that before, though. I'll make yeah, a note in the order so saying the order, this that's was why Chuck normal. always lists. Bob <laughs> Hayes' <laughs> first comment <laughs> made was to remove seven. Yep. <laughs> we'll blame it on you. And we, we can just tell them we're not going to tell them when we moved it to. Are there any other conditions? There's an infinite amount of spots between six and eight on that line, by the way. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask if uh, the commission wants uh, hay bale and silt fence because this is a lawn and it, it may not be needed. So we, there's other options. You don't have to give up on erosion control. 
or you can say it's, it's unlikely to have any erosion and I would just like some sort of construction fencing up there. Well, I'd so for the people that went out, you know, it might be a... I'd, I'd like to see erosion control, especially in the vicinity of the excavated areas. I mean, maybe... Yeah, you're putting the dry well in. The proposed deck and addition, is the addition going to have a foundation too? Yes. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of digging in that back area. But what kind? It's all erosion control, except for the fence. That well, I what's the most practical for this situation? Mulch sock, 12-inch. I think 12 the socks inch. are going to be fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. Socks are going to okay. be fine. Right? All right, so if you want to. It's no different in cost, but yeah, you can use a 12-inch model. Uh, it'll be in the order, 12-inch uh, mulch sock. Okay. They're a little bit easier to install. Yeah. Than the uh, hay bale and silt fencing. And silt fencing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm a good thing to pick them so the, the mulch sock that's that's indicated on the plan is fine. Yeah, that Jack. What's the out. what's right. the size of it? I was looking for where inch. it was. I yeah. noticed yeah. it's twelve inch. Yeah, it's twelve, 12 inch. Proposed in it's legend. at the limit of work line. Uh, mulch sock twelve <laughs> inches diameter. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Good job. <laughs> Do I hear motion? You, you don't have anything there, right? correct? I don't know. Well, I mean, you don't have anything. Oh, the, the only other thing that I, like, when, I when we were talking about this infiltration unit, you know, the downspouts have to have that overflow have a, piece need, to it. Uh, uh, Jack didn't show us a detail, a but I'll write it in for the order. Uh, it's just a simple attachment. Okay. So we shouldn't close because we have a month until the next meeting. I want to talk about that. Okay. Okay. We're going to have another meeting on this one if we can if we can not close but approve and then have a meeting where we could close and review the order of conditions and then sign the order of conditions this month. Yes, this you want month. Want to schedule an additional meeting? Yes, this month. I would like to. So, we need at least four members. Um, I'll be there. Okay. Um, you don't even care what day? Well, if, if, if I'm not scheduled, I'm saying I'll volunteer for it. I'll be there. I feel okay. responsible for flag seven. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, what, what have we heard from Harry? It uh, seems like Harry's uh, our missing member. I would suspect that he would not be able to uh, attend the meeting during the week, during work hours. Uh, he works out of Boston and, in, you know, other yeah. parts. Also, didn't his email say that he wasn't going to be able to attend the June, Jan January meeting yes. as well? Right. This is the likely to be fairly quick. Does anyone want to tag team this with that uh, open meeting law? I thing? can do that. A half hour beforehand, yeah. be here, yeah, and then I go down do to that. the do library? Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah, I could do that. That's, that's, the, that's, that's Thursday? Yeah. That's I have to Thursday. post this meeting. It's a real meeting, so people can come it's for uh, yeah. Citizens Open Forum if they wanted to. Yep. Yeah, so, but you know, I'll make it an hour. We'll have it in this room on uh, Thursday. When do you need two. the O and M plan? Jack will provide that to me. I'm not worried I mean, about that. He's that done that many times. It's not really right. different for any project. It's a very similar. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, we've done that before. Yeah. Okay. So I can make it next Thursday at two. Do we have four people? I can make it. I can make it, Bob. And yeah, right. so that's four. All right. Although it sounds like you're asking me to stay later than two. Well, Are you going to go to that other thing? You don't have to. Next Thursday at that's two, that's right? Yeah. Uh, conflict of. No, that's the open meeting law one. The conflict of interest you can take online. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah, I can, make, I can make that to make it work, at the very least. So, so, so with that in mind, then I'd make a motion to close. Close. Uh, 738 Pearl Street. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Mike. Dave. Dave. Mike's wondering what close means. Right. <laughs> so. This sets it, you up for getting Chuck. your order conditions. Um, he, Chuck will prepare that. Um, we need to get the order, the O and M plan from Jack at some point. And then we, in, in, in the order conditions, we will have those conditions that we talked about tonight. Yep. Um, you have the opportunity to come to that meeting and take a look at that order conditions before we sign it. 
If it's what we just discussed, I'm fine with everything yeah. that you guys just discussed. So I'll send it to Jack. Tru and yeah, Triple yeah. usually send an advanced copy to yeah. him when he sends it to us to review. So. There's a lot of additional general provisions in there that talk about the project, so you should probably take a look at it so you're not surprised. Mm -hmm. And then, so at our next read, meeting, read through it. We'll, we'll we'll take a look at our next meeting. We'll we'll make sure we get any edits that we have to chuck, and then uh, as long as everything's in line, and we'll we'll sign and approve that. Great and and once it's signed, you are as deed holder for the property. This gets attached to the deed. I understand that. And you're legally on the hook for everything that was agreed to in the document. Correct. And that condition order of conditions is good for three years. Okay. So within three years, you want to do your project, get it finished. Great. Okay. Great. Yes. Right. Thank thanks. you very much for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. That's fun. I see you guys have yeah. this little project. Oh, yeah. And, oh. you know, we don't play favorites. Your dog was just as friendly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. he was. Maybe yeah. too friendly. I'm not sure. He was good. You want him? I, <laughs> he'll give him to you. I won't. I give him to you before I give you the dog. I don't want either. No, <laughs> it's it's got Thank you. Uh, yeah, really. Um, we had a 735 RDA for Grove Street Meadowbrook Golf Club and. Jack Sullivan has asked us to postpone that until our a second January meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty fourth. Yeah. Um, we have an open citizens forum. So Chuck, do we do that before we do old new business? No. I would do um, Randall Road last the city, open city, I've, That's typically how it's done. Okay. I think we have business before right. that. Uh, we have a certificate of compliance. No, it's a last minute edition. For one no one asked me. We have a certificate of compliance for 270-0662, uh, 154 Green Street, map 17, lot 214, Federa. Chuck, you handed me a packet. What Am I supposed to hand this to... No, you, uh, you emailed me for, and you said okay. you'd like the latest plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had all those. I hadn't had the time to take one out of it. So you can choose and hand the rest back. My understand. So we did a site visit. Uh, and we had a list of things for the for Federa to to do. I think he's addressed all of them except for the bounds. Granite bounds, and <laughs> there's still no granite bounds in place. I think Chuck, you talked with the surveyor. I did. Andy Bremhall, I think I had that right, from Benchmark Survey, called me up and he proposed this, what we're, what we're looking at here. I thought I sent that to you guys, but it would have been today. It wasn't attached. attached. He said it's attached, uh, but sorry. it wasn't attached. Okay. Um, he's proposing um, so the access of the 25-foot, um, I guess it would flag 103 and 101, so the access they're meeting up across here. So we're not putting one down slope right where this cursor is. Where is this relative to? It's probably right behind the fence. Okay. So it's it's no. going to be behind the fence. Okay. So, so that's all there is to it. Four total. Four total. Okay. It looked like it could have been three, but you know he proposed this and he was okay with it. They, um, I heard from. What did we have on the order of conditions? We say quantity, we usually indicate yeah, and I guess you could hold him to he's may, he's violated one of those conditions. It's um, it's every forty feet and at turning points. So maybe he's, he's done. He's violated too. So um, this is forty-one feet span between here. Is that okay, Mike? Okay. Thank you for just. I just wanted to be accurate. Um, <clears throat> They're not in yet. There's nothing we can do. So I, I have a signed that. certificate of compliance, and when this happens, we I can I can yep. give it to okay. them. So, um. I know these were located today. Oh, okay. But I don't know. I will get a call when it's when it's finished. Were there any coming down the side of the fence? Down here. The other side. This this, this side. side here. Yeah. No. Because isn't that, that where the is wetland not, comes down? No, that's a kind of a drainage area. I don't yeah. think that was considered. See, okay. WF one hundred like makes a right turn there. 
Yeah, you see, uh, I'm going to just... Yeah. Yep. See this okay. angle? This is shows yep. you where it goes. So if it okay. ended at 101, you would think that it might go up. I'm just remembering where it was on the the applicant from next door because it came it came up on that side of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came around kind of around the corner, but that's okay. I don't have a problem with where they are. I don't think it came up that high. No. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. It looks like they're almost done over there. Mm. I don't have any problem with those rooms. I don't have any issues with location. So. We don't need a vote on this, do we? No. All right. Until then, um, it's, the, it's just out there. Right. Now, wasn't there an issue of a, a fence being installed in that area? Mm -hmm. So the owner of that side, Unit 2, came down to the office today and picked up the material to um, put in an application for an after-the-facts fence install. But looking at where that fence is, um, it seemed to meet what pretty much what we would ask for. I mean, there was gaps underneath the fence, mm -hmm. so it has that opening. Okay. Um, it's on what they want to use her existing lawn, but there will be a site visit. Okay. Are you the folks from that property? We are not. Okay. We have Pasapia's, right? Mm -hmm. Pasapia. Pasapia. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh uh, Randall Road. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, certificate of compliance for 21 Hunt Street, 270-0679, map 20 lot 523 and 254 Madden. I did a site visit today, um, and it pretty much looked, if you saw the photos. I have photos. Oh. I have all but. I didn't. Looked like these I looked for look a photo of the hay. So there's a after that was thrown on, but I didn't have one of those. So there's the driveway, and the rain garden, and then the a steep, then the bounds, and then kind of into the slope, as you can see, and then at the base of the slope. How were the bounds? The bounds were. The bounds were uh, fine. Okay, those were uh, a little odd before. I didn't pay close attention to the bounds. Um, so the base of the slope, instead of this bare earth, it was there was hay that's laid out. I'd asked the applicant when I, I probably came out when it was similar to what we're looking at right here, and prior to this, and under my direction, I asked him that you know went over what the commission asked, which was to remove the piles of debris. This is the result. <coughs> Mm -hmm. So I asked where that the debris was. No, well, I think yeah. more or less, and then that was the path that you no, did. You go in there with a the machine? No, I didn't. Okay, so in, in my opinion, the, the debris was there, and it was it was over where I can't see where the picture was taken from. Mm -hmm. So, like but you know, close, pretty close to the where the wetland is, and so he took all that out, and what I saw was this raw soil. And we came up with a plan to seed it. He used the upland seed mix and then cast hay over it. And that's what you looked at. Yep. So now you can, now you can yep, continue. Yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. And it's I think he added, a, he added a bound out by the access road to um, kind of continue it from, the, from one property line to the other. So those are the things that we requested along with the work to the infiltration basin. The, the rain garden. The rain garden. Yeah. So I removed the chips out of the rain garden? Not the sure. I think we, dis we decided right. that the chips were fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So it was just not what we've we been used to. We also gravel, and we also made the spillway larger to accommodate for the erosion that we had on that block store. Mm -hmm. um, and the garden works perfect now. So all the little things we fixed. And then we moved the bounds to where you guys wanted we it. But then when you guys came to approach them, we done that again, so we did that. And then, yeah, we, we and Jack Sullivan fixed all the drawings. So, of course, when you pull out all that debris, you're going to leave some of it. I mean, 
there, what am I supposed to leave all the leaf piles? Then they're going to say take No, no, it's good, it's good that you took out the leaf debris. It's good that you moved the bounds. We need them to be where they can, we, they can be, you know, identified on the plan because that is a jurisdictional area that um, legally um, needs to be protected. So, so that's yeah. that's all well and good. As, as far as, like, we've done what we've been asked to do. Um, my issue is that we're trying to refine it, and I can't, can't get it. So, so typically, so typically, um, what we do for the order for to close out an order of conditions mm -hmm. is we look for all the plantings we've asked for to be established mm -hmm. um, and to come in. Which um, they are. They are though. You guys asked us to do an. Well, those grass and seed down that was under those leaves. You asked us to clean up conservation. That's not our property. Was there nothing put in the order of conditions that after it, that it stuff gets taken yard. out? It says our yard. It doesn't say in what. And then at the last meeting, you guys wanted us to clean out, you know, further in from that. So we said, okay, we, well. We continue right. to accommodate. So, so, so sorry, just to where is the area on this plan that this was, debris was removed? You want me to show it to you? Yeah, Chuck, do you have an idea or, or you can... Uh, Thought it was name 4A. I, I'm just going to circle a big area. If you know it better than I do, yeah, you, know, sure. you can come on up. But oh, yeah. I'm going to say it's. Uh, there was pockets of debris in this yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. You know. In our property. So we asked them to move debris off of their property. So we were responsible so the, to do the, our yard. The we went issues. all the way up here and cleaned everything that was asked of us. And it also said. Chuck did tell us to take shrubs and, and branches and everything. I took six dump trailers out, so by hand. I mean, it was a nightmare. It's not like it's an easy task, mm -hmm. and it's not free mm -hmm. because I should have been working when I was doing this. And everyone dumps back there. It's not like it was even just So I feel that we've been us. over it and above, and I've special so ordered, like, second day air to get upland seat before the snow comes. So that this all so be the, done. So the picture that we were looking at, do you mind bringing that up again, Chuck? Yeah. Do you know about where the property line is? Yeah, the property line is literally right here That's along the grass line. So this right here, I literally had to climb in here and dig all this up, which is not a lie, it's the truth. And then I went, okay, I had to clear all this here. So how can you not do that and not remove leaves? Now this isn't raw soil, this is just, you know, doesn't have leaves on it. It's not like anybody dug anything up. And that property, the adjacent property is oh. town, property. Is town property. Yeah. Town property. Okay. Well, I was more than happy to put the seed down. We put the hay down. But that's why we don't. To wait till the springtime. That's for the, it's just uh, seed what that seed is actually looking after the back thing that you guys wanted. Because Do you have the order of conditions? Down. Look, we're we just do. trying to be consistent. Of course. Okay. We're just trying to be, and we're just trying to treat, treat every applicant sure. the same way. You know, and you did clean that out, and I applaud you for that. I think that's fantastic. Um, and you have made the changes, and the bulk of the work is done, and a bulk of the vegetation is in. Um, All at, the vegetation. And, and I hear your frustration. I mean, clearly you're under some financial pressure, too, with refinancing, as your email yeah, explained, I think. But um, we're just trying to do the best we can to close this out with you, sure. and we'll, we'll talk this through. And sure. So the issue, I guess, is... So I'm actually of the opinion that they've gone in, they've removed debris from an area that's not their property, but we, we asked you to do, uh, that... You know, beyond that, the, the repair at that point, if, if the wetland seat mix doesn't take, I mean, there's an aspect of that that I feel that it's town property, that mm -hmm. we should be going back in the spring if it doesn't take. Or well, is the wetland seed mix at this brown area, area the see. brown area, which is? Okay. It would be in the additional conditions, right? Which is town property. It's not yeah. their property. <laughs> 
I don't yeah. see how we can hold up the certificate of compliance for I'm extra work that they did on town property and the vegetation hasn't grown. That makes no sense. Yeah. You know, if they've done if they've done what the, we, they were supposed to do on their property, we we shouldn't hold them hostage for doing extra work on town property, I, which I, it sounds like the I way that it's heading. Even I don't like that. that I would agree with you, Dave. But I don't like that. And, and they, that said, Dave, I, if I was out there today and I knew where the property line was in the field, I would be able to verify for you right here and now exactly where in this photo that property line is. Um, and he's saying it's at the base of the slope, and that may be true, but I can't verify that for you right now. What's done? I, I give him full. I give him I give him full credit for for doing what we've asked him to do, um, and you know and it's been and it's a benefit to the conservation area that he's taken that out, and if he's thrown down seed mix and put on hay, um, I say we just put it on our calendar. We we give them the approval for closure and we cut, put on our calendar to go back in the spring, and you know just keep an eye on it. Um, I, chances are it's going to be wet and it's going to have the seed bank so odds are hopefully something will take you guys bring up a good point about this not being probably on their property and I guess on other projects and we're talking you know sometimes precedent have we required upgrade to property not on their particular property and their particular pro project. I, I would like to comment on that because at a neighborhood. But we have. Uh, at, okay. In the neighborhood down <laughs> off Sunnyside. Yeah. Dave Johnson did it for us. He took. Well, on a neighborhood off Sunnyside, people who whose backyards abutted conservation land, um, neighbors would walk through people's yards and dump all their leaves into a mega pile. Do you remember <laughs> that site? You know, and is that on his land, the, those people's land? No. But, you know, people are doing leaf dumping just past their pro And I'm not saying you did this, but pe some people in town are habitual kind of offenders to dumping Correct. their leaves so off I mean, just sure, off that's, their that's property. That's exactly what happened though. And, the original and, owner of that property and, just swept everything into it just this, like we saw at 1503. And these residents have out of their own personal effort totally cleaned that up and I and at this point because we were told if we I'm, clean this up now we'll pull it's when does we'll, it we'll it just getting I'm not so sure we would I don't I'm not I'm sorry but I don't I'm not so sure we said we'd close it out no, I mean, mean we have to evaluate this I have it on I have the last town meeting saved on my DVR so I have the items that you guys wanted oh I'd like to see where we you said we'd I mean? close it out since you have and it on I the have DVR email and me. so that would be great maybe we can right, add we that to the right. what we're trying to do we tried to do everything that was asked of we did everything that was asked of us we would just like to get our certificate so, so what's what I'm hearing here, and I want to get to yes, believe me, and oh, and that's it? yeah, I don't want to have a problem. I, you know, I liked working with you guys. Course, it was great. Cool. You've done a lot, but if so, what what ends up happening? What ended up happening is we I spent a lot of time out there, mm -hmm. and at no point did I want you to take the leaves away, but that's what happened. And I was just confronted with step after step after step that I needed to take place. Now, if the leaves were there and the soil wasn't bare, then, and you just took the sticks, even though it looked wrong or it felt wrong, that's what I actually asked you to do. But in the order conditions, it says remove leaf debris. But I went out there and met with you. But you supersede my deed? I don't understand the like point when we're talking about what does that have to do with talking and taking the trees? When we registered our to take our compliance, that you said that you wanted leaf debris and shrubbery removed. It says it in there. So if I thought I was taking the next step by doing the right thing. Well, I I think that it also says in there that the conservation commission gives the agent the authority to make decisions okay. on the field, except for a couple of things, which I can't 
issue a certificate of compliance. So when I was out there, I was in complete control. And what I said had to be done. So I hope that answers your question. Is what you said I did do? Right. And so anyways, I just hold on, Neil. So just can, quit, can Mike, I, yeah. Mike, no, you can't. So um, I asked for the, so I was just confronted with this new situation. So I asked for it to be seeded mm -hmm. and put some hay on it to eliminate the, the erosion control. So to make sure that there wasn't any erosion. In my mind, now we're waiting. But then I get this email and you're talking about, oh, we have to, we have to refinance. Well, we, this we, is the first time I heard about that. But that's not your business to know that. We just have to, now it's But it seems to be the main point of why we have to change what we've done in the past for your project. Because we want to close because we did everything we were told to do. Now, yeah. I'm just trying to be realistic as a human with you. Like, you know, you're in, everybody's in financial stuff as well. You know, it wasn't your business at first to say, this is why I'm rushing to get everything done. But, you know, now I have to kind of say, hey, yeah, we want to refinance. And I can't do that until the springtime now. But I did everything you asked me to do. And I went above and beyond. But it wasn't good enough. It's not that it's not good enough. It's, 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 it's now we're waiting on time. The certificate of compliance releases um, the commission's hold over the project. So we're saying mm -hmm. everything is fine. So these six people, oh, we're missing one, but these five people need sure. to feel completely satisfied that no issues will happen in the future. So that's really what you're telling them Possibly. here. Leaves are going to fall yeah. and it's going to look just like what it did before we took the leaves out. I just, so I I just, mean, I just think it's there was no grass there, but we now have planted grass. We're at the mercy of the board. There's not only do about it. We've done everything we can do. I just, at this point. Well, so you know, I, I can make a recommendation. It, I, um, may, I, may I just ask Chuck, just for clarity? Sure. Uh, seriously, what Chuck is suggesting here is that the, none of the things that you control in your property will be an issue of concern in the future. Obviously, we're not going to tell you that sure. the town property can't have leaves fall on it and branches fall. Sure. I mean, that's not what that was about, I believe. Am I correct? Yeah, no. Okay, okay. Is it just obviously, we're not. We know that the town property is going to do whatever nature wants it to do. That's that's fine. Uh, so, what is your suggestion? My, so I'm not sure if. So I heard that you have two. Your email said you had two months before you have to close on this um, refinancing. Within the next two months. So. I think realistically you're right that it's not it's not probably not going to germinate and come in do you agree with that so I think he's I think that they're responsible because it was part of their project but I also think that that I agree with Neil, and um, I, you know, agree with the Maddens that they were they were very accommodating the entire project, and you could you could think of putting some conditions on it if you wanted to, or just to say like Anika was saying, let's just make a mark in the calendar and see what's happening. Realistically, what, what is going to happen? The hay is going to stay out there and the, the seed is going to germinate in the spring. The only thing that we're trampling on is the fact that we've held other people and we've been tough on them for a long time and we wouldn't let them get certificates of compliance until the Grass lawn, which was 80, 70, 60 percent established, we waited for that last 20 percent. Do we have on their, on their property? Not been on their property. Oh, yeah. But this isn't on his property. This is on, on, not on their that, property. That, that is not it's on part of his project. It's not part of his project. It's technically not part of his project because it's not part of his property. You can't just because you're part of the Conservation Commission make part of his private project on public property. You can't do that. So If he cleaned that up, he cleaned that up of his own um, goodwill goodwill towards the town and you requested that he do that I don't think it's fair for basically I'll repeat what I said for you to hold hostage this gentleman 
for when he went over and yeah, above. Dave, Dave, we got all that. You know what? I, if someone I don't goes think out it's in the fair. middle of town forest, which we don't own, let's, no, let's find a wetland, Tabernacle Swamp, and start cutting things down, which is our property. There's no recourse for the commission because that's, it was on totally town land. Thing. Totally different thing. These people oh, actually just, have have okay, records okay. where they where they contacted the police about people going out and dumping at the end of their street. They can't stop them. But, you know, we requested that they pick up the stuff that other people dumped at the end of their street, and now they can't close in their project because they cleaned up something that wasn't even on their property. Listen. It's not fair. Well, I object I to you saying we're holding them hostage. I don't, I don't think that's think great terminology for this we, commission. We can argue this. And, and you being a part of it is disappointing. Madam Chair, if I can just comment. You know, the, the area that's seeded and with hay is relatively flat. The, the slope is vegetated. I mean, it's infant vegetation, but it's vegetated. So I'm willing, based on the good faith effort of the applicants, I'm willing to take the chance that what they've set up is going to take. I understand it might be a precedent. Um, in this particular situation, the clearing that was done was a benefit and a good to the conservation land. The seeds that were laid out you know, all the potential is there for growth to happen as we would like to see it happen. The only issue that could potentially come up is the creeping of invasives. You know, is that going to become a problem of erosion? No. No. So, so is it, chances are some native herbaceous cover is going to come up? That would be really pretty great. You know, so when it, when it comes around to it, technically speaking, I don't have a problem issuing a certificate of compliance and checking back so that just for the sake of Boy. what happens in history, you know, keeping an eye on this particular property. That whole area is is has been historically in pretty bad shape anyway. So, so Nika, I would agree, agree with you. I think that... There's, I don't see a reason, considering everything that's been done and the, the activities that have gone on, that there's a reason to, not to close, but certainly not that this commission wants to make sure we, that we look at this in the spring, so just to see. But it's not, not necessarily something that needs to be part of this, keeping this open. It, I guess, is there any other item on this that, that no. is being held up? I mean, no. If no. that's it's, it, then I would, if we're I would make a motion to close. Now, what's the worst case in the spring? Maybe some invasives come in through all that you know and, and if they do you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry trying, but in this particular area they I, do I, if I, they I, come I, in they come in well, I come I'm, not, in, probably, come I'm, in. I'm I, not trying to pretend that I'm naive here, but I understand is the concern that people are going to dump leaves there I don't I don't think so I don't think so no no, no, no I, just, I, mean, that, I don't think anymore. so anymore no I well, think well, uh, I, the concern, I guess that's, is the concern is that there's significant erosion if the if the, if the grass doesn't, grass doesn't take, take it. Right, I, see, I understand that, but that's something that hardly that. is his problem. Which is also going to stop so some of the erosion, that's, if anything. It, and if we're worried about him dumping leaves out there, and he's not going to do that, that's very easy to monitor. But obviously, a, a serious rainstorm could turn that into a... I can guarantee we will never do yeah. that. Well, not with well the I just, hay. I'm just saying, but he can't control that. Bob, not with the hay that's down there. There's a thick mat of hay. Okay, well, so we should be in pretty good shape. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? I think with the current condition, I would make a motion to issue the order, uh, the, the certificate, certificate of, compliance. of compliance. Thank you. I second it. All those in favor? Thank you. Sir. Great. All right. 22. Thank you. 22 Pastor Road. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. Have a good night. 22 Pastor Road? Um, 22 Pastor Road. We did a site visit. Did a site visit, yeah. You want to do that while I look for something? Sure, sure. We did a site visit. Um, the, the driveway was, work was not completed. Um, I'm going to have to read my email about the site visits because now I'm forgetting. Sorry. I sent an email this afternoon. Um, the driveway is not finished. There was a temporary fence around the um, pool, the in-ground pool. The debris that was near the resource area in the back 
of the yard was totally cleaned out and looked really good. Um, and just an interesting point, the, the lawn at the end of the driveway, in my opinion, was lower elevation than the wet meadow <laughs> on the neighboring property, if you know that project. Mm. I was there for the permitting of that one. So it's slightly lower. There's some interesting ground cover. It's not lawn between so the driveway. So the um, Dave, I don't know what you saw as ground cover between the pool and the neighboring. Um, it wasn't grass. It just was whatever come up volunteer. It was it's that weeds. chicory weed that was, was in there. So uh, a lot of it, but uh, no grass really looked like it had come in. Was it green? It was green. That's a lot. <laughs> My yard. It's a, it's a broadleaf <laughs> weed. So a type of chicory weed. Um, so, so certain parts have not been completed. And there was also, Chuck, did you look at, at the uh, order of conditions? Was there a, a drainage trench that was supposed to be at the head of the driveway? No. Between, no, just down. There was, there was uh, in the original topography of the land, there was some sort of berm. swale, right. berm, and part of this project was the town was going to look into it, the town engineering department was going to make an evaluation of that and determine whether they need it or not. I did notice that it was still there after partial grading had been done beyond the pool area and the, and the garden was removed, so he may still be using it. but. One of the reasons why um, the applicant has withdrawn his request for a certificate of compliance is because he um, wants to get on to, en to enlarge the driveway. He didn't put in the crushed stone at the base of the driveway for additional infiltra infiltration, and there's going to be a little bit of grading out there. He doesn't really know where that's at, but they were just concentrating on the house, getting in the house, and these things will happen. I thought the current proposal had the driveway being enlarged already? It did. Okay, he wants to make it even larger than... It wasn't touched. It's the original driveway. There's been no... That's the driveway that was there. Yeah. So he's going to enlarge that. Okay. He's just waiting to get He's just waiting, yeah. Yes. I thought you meant he wanted to come back in so and, and propose something no, even larger. No, he, he's not finished doing all the work. Okay. Step back and up. I some road work on here. They have been... Maybe that's what it is. They're probably just painting lines on the sidewalk. It, isn't he on the, uh, the So I think the, the point the, the point is that um seeing the road or is he in the, the green? Driver's <laughs> test. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Pasapia is withdrawing his certificate of compliance, so if, you know, can we can the request for a certificate of compliance. So He's we can talk time. about this more or okay. we, we're, we're good, you know. So the, yeah. Is he going to we'll be applying for a minor plan change for the driveway? It, yeah, that was on the original plan. Oh, it was. He's, he's going to follow the original plan. He's just not complete with all the components of it. Okay. What? We were both confused by how you said I can understand you. Okay. Um, all the pressure. Yeah. We have a, 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 a citizens open forum. Um, Garagosian, did I get that right? That is actually yeah. right. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Um, lot three, Randall Road. Would you like to give us an idea of what your proposal? I think so. Um, I saw that last minute, so I do apologize. But we uh, are in the process of trying to purchase lot three, which is now. Uh -huh. Randall Road, which you guys are well familiar with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have kind of been finding stuff out as we've been going along from what we were originally told, what we were originally thinking, as far as my wife Jess and I were moving to Charlestown. It's myself, her, the up and coming little Garagosian, and our dog, who's a Siberian husky, who's on the car. She keeps on laughing at it. So anyway, so we've, we've kind of gone through discovery. Chuck's been very helpful through it all. And we keep on, we were continuing to find things that we were originally unaware of. 
And one of the things which is kind of post-fact was the grading on the side of the home, which in the original drawings, the original plans we had, didn't show any of that. Yet I included the original grading in, in the packet that I gave you. And basically what it is, it's an eight foot drop over about a 25 foot span, which was obviously very surprising to us, but at the same time, essentially unusable. And we thought that a resolution might be a sort of retaining wall to start, and then it evolved to being, I think, the best course of action. And then we thought that was all good, and we had to go through the proposal process. And then we found out beyond that, there, there was a drawing that had to do with relocation or redesignation of existing trees, which was about a month post offer acceptance. So that came as another surprise. So the last two weeks, I've essentially spent educating myself on the botany and arborists and native trees and invasive species and the whole thing. And what I found was that the original plan they had that was signed off on, I think it was by the commission, I'm not exactly sure who signed off on it, but it was proposed by the civil engineer who's um, Jack McClickley, I believe. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Is that North Ray? He's the one that was involved in the whole project at the start. So long story short, Having spoken with my landscaper who owns his business for years, he does landscape design, architecture, and that's his business that he owns. We discussed the specific tree proposal that they had on that lot, which is the original lot that they showed. And the trees there were not what somebody who had an eye for it would designate in those locations. So basically, what we discovered, they had, I think it was eight or nine white pines within about 15 feet of the house. Um, among other trees that one would impede the actual foundation itself over time. You know, those trees, I believe, grow from about 80 feet to 100 feet. Uh, I grew up in North Andover abutting Harold Parker. My parents' property still abuts conservation land. This is something that initially drew up to the property because it's unbuildable. And it's more private than a lot of lots, I think, in Reddit. But where we grew up and we ran into similar situations where we had a white pine fall on our house. Our neighbors had a white pine fall on their house. Um, that, I believe, was only two instances, but we found a bunch of rotted white pines that were the next big storm were going to fall. So we started thinking about this and came up with, I think, a more realistic proposal that covers the basis of the 15 trees that the conservation had required for this specific lot. I believe it was 40 some odd trees, maybe 48 trees throughout the entire 100 foot buffer zone. And then what we did was well, the 15 trees to replace the subsequent 15 trees that they were in the original proposal. And then we added four additional native shrubs to exceed what I think was on the original drawing. So that's kind of a long story to phase one, which is we were going to try and fix the grading so that we could have a functional yard. And then part two was removing the trees that one day it makes sense to be there and relocating them within the lot so that we could have some functional space outside. And that was kind of the, the gist of what we've been doing for the last month and a half. Just a, a, a quick question. So one of the things on on here, just as I know, it's not necessarily where you're discussing. You're showing the proposed concrete pad off the back. That was on the original drawing. Okay. So Nancy, no, it was Jack McQuilkin said that that was requested by the conservation committee, mm -hmm. right. and they yes. wanted that there. And I didn't know the difference of not having it there, so I don't know why it was requested, but I just wanted to put it. Because usually people. Um, when they do a design such as this, they don't, they'll forget to put that if you, if you wanted that. So like a walkout basement, it usually makes sense. And that's an impervious surface. So you have to account for runoff from that area. Right, so the, the original plans that I was given, and I think what they had planned to do was pave, the driveway pave, the main entryway. And that was on the original drawing. I don't okay. know what purpose that served. Yeah, so that's I, I'm I'm glad you said that. Just because I remember 
having us say, well, somebody, usually what happens is somebody purchases the house and the first thing they do is, well, why am I walking out to grass? And they will bring it in front of us before so that somebody isn't coming back the first thing they do. And, and we say, well, why didn't we include this last time? What's the difference? Is it, was it too close to the wetlands? So I wasn't sure if that was something you added or something that no, was already my added, original so. crazy drawing, which Chuck saw, was I was going to have either a bluestone or a brick up yep. the back, yep. which I I'd never crossed my mind having more concrete yep. outside your back door unless there was a need for it. I mean, it doesn't need to be. I don't think it, it doesn't need to be concrete. It doesn't need to be concrete. You have to account for we just, impervious surfaces. We just surfaces. want to make sure they account for an area where uh, basically a landing that nobody wants to walk out to grass. Yeah, so the conversation I had yesterday with the engineer was that that was in the original drawing, and my resolution would be what we could just put, you know, wood, essentially modular blocks on that concrete, so it's not concrete. Yeah, and you're not stepping in concrete. Uh, yeah, so to keep in mind, it doesn't have to be concrete. Okay. So <laughs> you want to use I know what a blue stone or uh, <laughs> definitely not. It's real annoying that it's like three quarter inch exactly. piece stone. <laughs> yeah. Try walking on that in your bare feet. Yeah, we, have, we live in Charlestown now, and our neighbors have enough crushed stone. Most of the most of the plans that we approve for subdivision don't have the final house design on it. You know, so this is a process we like to go through, so that so that you know the people who are going to live in the house understand like what our job is and what we're here for and what we are looking for and stuff like that. So. Um, so how many, how many trees? <laughs> so so do, can I just? Yeah. Um, this is not going to turn into a minor project approval or um, an approval that we need to get into the weeds right now about what they're asking is what I is asked. What, yeah. Does the commission? It, it would it be worth it to move forward with such a plan? We're going to have to do an amended order of condition for all this change. So we're going to have to get real plans, <coughs> planning, planning plan, all that. So we're really just saying, do you agree with this retaining wall, with, with what you're looking at here, making the moves, and or is there something here that doesn't work and you you can't you can't buy in? So just right, to understand so what what would potentially be proposed. Feedback. Obviously the feedback. Yeah. Got it. The patio. Correct. And. The proposed walk and the retaining wall. Is there anything the else? Walk, there? So the only things that were so the original plan was basically that's how you get what the original plan. Yes, yeah, so, but this is they have. I don't have a. I didn't get a something of the original plan. Yeah, I like that. I like that's what you show. That's, that's, so that's the original yeah. plan. It's on the R and D. Yeah. Oh, so you can see it. they have over yeah. here eastern white pine, eastern white pine, eastern white pine, eastern white pine. Then they have a grouping of five eastern white pines over here. Um, they have red birches down this way, red maples in the corner, flowering dogwood. Um, that, so when I, I thought, wow, that was strange because I didn't get this until I sat down with the engineer to talk about the retaining wall. Then he gave me this, and it was the first time I'd seen it. That was about three weeks ago. So then I started thinking, well, my first question was, who came up with that? And they specifically said we just threw it in the river. Because if you go to the bigger sheet, which I don't have with me, it states the specific number of trees within the 100 foot zone. I think it was something 70 like 10, something. Yeah, something like 10 eastern white pines. And then if you actually count them out, they had something like 15 or 16. So they were already mismatching the designated number of trees proposed by the commission. <coughs> I count 15 from the original plan. On the white pines? No, there are um, 15 trees, yep. Yeah. Right. There are six eastern white pines. On the original plan? Yep. Chuck, is there anything about this plan that concerns you? Aren't there? I did ask. Um, I did ask the applicant to talk to the engineering department and find out if they were okay with the retaining wall, and they, they are, right? Yes, they are. So that they was the my next step would be to get the structural engineer to design it. Yeah. Really, the rest is just the process when we're going to get into what's there. I mean, I did, when, now that we're seeing this for the first time, um, so the property <coughs> line, oh, that's right. you had, how, you how, did the, how does the, this planting plan interact with the property next to them? 
I know, is that going to be a problem? Yeah. Talking crowding. But we actually, if things work out, we'll, if things work out, we should have uh, the, the landscape architect who has applied to the commission on our commission by January or maybe the first or second meeting. So hopefully we'll have some help. No with, pressure. With, with, yeah, with no, come, with no plan. Come join so if you know any, anybody on the committee, make sure you support to us. Um, so. Have we increased? What's the limit of the commission? Seven? Yeah. yeah. Plus yeah. associate members. Plus, yeah. One of the questions I have on this is how does this proposed grass area dovetail with your neighbor's property? So the original idea was to get, and the way I originally understood it, is there's one sheet that shows the actual elevation. It, it almost runs parallel with where that retaining wall is shown. Yep. And that's in the plan I gave you. And then that drops from 260 to 252. So the way I understood it was as long as we got the entry level, which is, let's say, where the proposed walkway is, mm -hmm. then down to the proposed grass area, as long as we got that eight foot grade covered, then that was sufficient <coughs> what the commission would be looking for. So it, you've got, I it looks like there's more detail. proposed yeah. patio um, to, than the original. So get, we are, they didn't right. have an original a, a patio on the original because the grade was at, there's one of the sheets in there that shows the side elevation. So that's the proposed side elevation from Nancy Twomey. But there's a sheet, it's I believe the last sheet in the packet that shows the original side grading, which is I would estimate yeah. about 25 to 30 degree pitch, which is quite significant. And I think just from even you know, safety, functionality, lawn, lawn mowing, I just don't see how that would really work for data analysis. That's that's almost that required three to one. That's pretty yeah. steep. Yeah, it is steep. Um skewed on that. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Not that steep, but it's longer. And we had a lot of layers at the bottom, so it was fine. But with the original plans that I got post fact was a lot that was entirely, you know, with the, with the pitch, 8 feet over 25 feet, and 15 trees scattered with no rhyme or reason. It, to me, it eliminated all the value. Isn't this also the house that they originally had the deck behind the house, and then we had to move it around the corner? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we want shrunk the deck from the original plan by two feet to provide space for the hard, the previous hardscape patio below. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna mention um, the wall. I've got some concerns about the wall. It, you know, not. The integrity of it, but just the grading at the end. So they're going to step it down. The way it was explained to me by the architect and the engineer was that it was going to be a two tier wall, so it'd be a two foot setback, two four and a half foot section. Mm -hmm. So it'd basically be one tier here, two foot setback, <coughs> and then the upper tier. <coughs> and then along this side where it kind of comes down, they're going to step it down. So this would be a six foot area where you could still. You would essentially have the original pitch. That would then be six feet set back from the property line where you can still get a lawnmower up and down. And yeah. Access yeah. to. And inside that wall, just some small plantings or something? And so, with on the tier? Just wondering, in between. Yeah, so in between the two tiers, my plan is to do something with natural flowers or plants or. Yeah. yeah. We originally thought just doing kind of an eight foot sheer wall, which was the beginning conversation, which. Kind of seen like it's, it's been done in Reading. I, yeah. I, I don't recommend I, I it, but I mean, we live on Wall Street in Charlestown, and they just tore down the last remaining wall on Wall Street because it's on Bump and Hill with like this. And we measured up eight feet, and that was pretty high. That is high. So we figured it might be better just to set it back and get some sort of we started Googling and stuff, so get some sort of plant things yeah. and color. And so yep. one of the things that's on the sorry, Dave, sorry, just one ahead. more. Um, one of the things that's on the original plan, but I don't see on your plan, is the post and rail fence. Yes, which is kind of important from my perspective because it it literally becomes that twenty five foot line. Yep. So what I told the engineer was to put that on the drawing, and they were just like, "Well, add that after the fact." Oh, okay. Because the way you described it to me, it was going to be well the, another piece that I didn't know about. I didn't know that existed until. Monday of this week, 
Surprise. Yeah, surprise, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just when I thought I had it all figured out, I found out there's a benefit. That actually, to me, is a benefit. We have a Siberian Husky, and he's as active as you could ever imagine a Siberian Husky being. And I have, I grew up with Huskies on the land that we have at North Andover, and they're just magnets and tips. So I actually like that idea because it will keep him out of that natural vegetation. Yeah. So um, if you're going to come before us with any other plans, you, you know, <coughs> you might, especially with the dog, you might want to think about closing that fencing and how you're going to propose that. You don't have to propose that now, but that's just one of those items. Like, you know, it's clearly going to go along that 25, mm -hmm. but what happens, what happens then? You so know, my, how far? One of my questions would be, in regards to the fencing, he, I mean, if he can't escape, fence he fence. will. That's just the way mm. he has to breathe. Mm. Um, fence fence would be fence what fence. we do with the actual fence on the perimeter. Because we're going to have to fence it one yeah. way or the other. And I heard you guys talking about earlier that there has to be some sort of spacing, I believe. Well, if it's a post and rail fence, there's <laughs> plenty of room for animals to move through. Yeah, but I'll say he. But he so the, what I was understanding is that the post and rail would be on the 25 foot line. Right. And then we would like to do some sort of permanent fencing just to keep him in, because he'll get out. Yeah. My three, dog had grown up with three, got arrested enough times, but he had a little Three feet is nowhere near high enough for a husky. Yeah, it has to be Well, then that. maybe instead of a post and rail, yeah. maybe we can talk about a different kind of fence. Um, but I, I would not be in favor of fencing through the wetlands in the back. No. Okay. Through the wetlands? Right, at the back corner, where he just indicated. But well, essentially along the A5, A6, A4 line, I'd my like understanding I'd like to see it on the 25. On the 25? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was in the original plan. When I had discussed this, I think Chuck and I had talked about it, that you could fence your actual lot line, was the way I understood it. Without I going through the wetland. Without going through the wetland. So you, you okay. could, we, so we have, Mike, you were supposed to say this. Uh, we have we, allowed. Yeah, we have allowed. And recently, we've allowed right up to the wetland. Wetland line. Yeah. I mean, that's what you can propose, and then the commission can decide what they want. That's what I told you because that's that is exactly what we. Proposed. But the understanding, based on the original plan, that it was it was going to be on the twenty-five. That's the beauty of this. So they're coming in with an amended right. order. We're wiping the slate. We're gonna we're gonna look at this because it's such a substantial change. It's almost like a brand new order of condition, so that can happen. So, um, and maybe I'm sorry, some fencing between the street and the wall. I mean, what was yeah. significant out there? I, don't know, I mean, that's that, more safety. That issue wetland was issue. like soil. The the real wetland was very close to the berm, and it was marginal. And then over yeah. the berm was that stream. So yeah, I remember. You know, I mean, I. <clears throat> You know, I want to, I think that we don't want to um, frown on people using, you know, as much land as they can. You know, I think it shouldn't have, turn into others lawn. Have it. Others have yeah. proposed it up to it the wetland line. Yeah. I think we can really... Well said. Do you have a plan for something on top of the wall? <laughs> yeah, there's a plan on top of the wall. I, I understood it as like a three, three and a half minutes. Um, it's then what we're going to maybe do is add some sort of gate at the bottom because, or somewhere along that side elevation drawing, just because we're going to be letting him out that side door up where the deck is, and then he'd be going down. So he'd have to be contained somewhere. Or another. He's contained now on his patio. So. Be, <laughs> tie a rope to one of the posts. Yep. Keep he'll the be, clip up on the door. Yeah. Up. If we did that, yeah. he'd knock the light bulbs over. You'll be letting him out and then dragging him back in. Huh. They don't like to come back in the house. No, they don't. He's developed a new thing where he just yeah. <laughs> Friends of mine have an Akita and they asked the vet if it was a problem from being outside in the winter and he laughed. He goes, do you know where these dogs are from? Yeah. Probably you can't get Mounds in Japan, he goes, they love the cold weather. Since the weather changed, you can't come back in. Yeah. No. We have a tech like that now that steps down and he's chasing down the stairs. It's going to be hard. So there's no house in this lot now, right? No. It's just no. A pile of dirt. no. All right. No. Unfortunately. So no, it's at least it's a pile of dirt. We can 
that's a much easier thing to start with than a house that's in a position that's got problems. On this, when I see the proposed walk and the proposed patio, 30 foot by 19, <clears throat> was all of that included in the drainage system, that increase? Well, that's where, um, so the, there was a, a deck out there and an open slotted deck probably wouldn't, might, you know, it probably wouldn't be included in the drainage, in, you know, impervious. So now it's going to turn into um, a patio, but he, you know, they can do it so that it's pervious. I mean, that could be a requirement. Right. It, it also goes through the 35 foot line. I want to draw your attention to that because you yeah. might not want to get into uh, asking for uh, a variance. Mm -hmm. So you might want to just move the patio out of that the 35 foot. These are the questions that I asked yesterday. Yeah. Same thing with the fence. And they said, let's just put yeah. it this way. Um, the way I understood it to start was that if a builder's asking for something like that, it's Automatic no, but if it's a homeowner, sometimes there's more leniency. Well, the thing is, idea is to <laughs> the builder took it's all. It's a no. It's just not automatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if this was a fresh lot, I think that there would be a lot of opportunity out there to do mitigation um, for that, for that, there, which we asked for, which would be planting or um, invasive removal and things like that. There's not many or any invasives out there yet. But now that we've taken the canopy down, there may be. And you've asked for mitigation. And we've already asked really mitigation. Good. So um, unless you want to pay for a uh, habitat study in Bear Meadow, I don't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I don't, I I don't know crazy. what else we could uh, have. Well, that's a quick pro quo. We pay for the study. So we so might look at yeah. the We're negotiating here. Considering it's that. Strong. You, you can choose or, or not to choose to try to get out of that 35 foot zone with the patio. The, that was the that would be the best. My drawings that I showed Chuck yeah. literally run the line. Yeah, no, that's, and, you, and, the original, and I checked out the original too, and it, it, he stayed out of it also yeah. for, with that. Although it looks like it's taken a different turn there. The 35 foot line seems to go along the square deck and it's cutting through it over here. So, oh, well, actually, actually it's a different, different turn. 35 foot line seems to be in a little different, different spot, place, yeah. So. The, the line along the uh, western boundary, where you've got the white spruce, Thuga, gi green giant, and I look at the pictures. Those are, I don't, I can't tell with the green giant how tall they get, but the white spruce looks ginormous. Is there enough room there? I didn't want the white spruces on there. I was just trying to stay aligned given what the commission had on the previous so, that I saw. So Becky, the this was in the area there were a lot of a couple trees be tall trees being removed there. The neighbors had a huge concern about privacy. Privacy and the sun and what was coming down into that That's lot true. next door and they we I think we were trying to get something as large as we My could. point is, it, it, you can't plant, you know, like a, a sugar maple mm -hmm. that close together. They mm. just okay. don't, you know, some... They don't thrive. They're not going to thrive. That's my concern. It's and it's, that's a really tight line. I don't know. You have to ask your landscaper. But when I see the... the, the um, wow. That yeah, white spruce is huge. Spruce, yeah. I think as much space as could. I... I don't care if it's the only thing I would not want would be the white pine because they're so top heavy. I mean, I almost killed my brother. It's yeah, you've got a history with white pine. It doesn't have to be white pine. I mean, a native, <laughs> a native, <laughs> something native that can tolerate growth in that so. area. You know, that's that's my one, restriction. They grow one for um, a year. Well, something I want to say. You're assuming you liked his brother. Yeah, exactly. Some, something I want to say about so you guys my alibi. <laughs> About the grass area, I mean, when people move into the house, they want to have a, a lawn to do things, you know, on and to just have time with other people. And that's, you know, I understand that. Um, I will say that, you know, from my perspective, I would probably be inclined to allow grass just about anywhere on this lot up to the 25 foot line. I would not want to see grass past that 25 foot line. Because that 25 foot line is supposed to be, according to what we're trying to do to protect the wetlands, a vegetated zone that that is um, a natural buffer between your land and 
the wetland. Is it yeah. usually referred to as a do not disturb area? Mm -hmm. Right. So Natural yeah. vegetation. So that's, 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 that's the whole vegetation. So on this site yeah. there, there's currently the hay with the silk covering yeah. on it on that line. On the so 25. Yeah, basically anything beyond so that dark checkered line, there's yeah. not, nothing's been touched yeah. back there. My only concern with that was there are a lot of, not to bring it back up, there are a lot of fallen trees back there. And that's just something, if as time went on, I mean, if there's something we're concerned about, there's right now, right where the red birch is on the back, there's two what look to be dead trees that are about well, 40 we, feet tall. Well, we have a process to deal with that. Okay. If you're the homeowner and you want to take down a tree in the 25 foot, and there's a whole another policy and procedure we can go to on that, we want the health of that area to be maintained. And sometimes that means um, cutting down a dead tree. Sometimes it means leaving the dead tree in place, and if, if generally that's what we try to do because it promotes additional habitat for uh, there are a lot of species that live in decaying wood, you know, and live off that. So, so there are ways to to deal with that and and to manage that land well, and hopefully for you to get, we'd like you because ideally what you could get if that's really lush and healthy you get a natural fence. That's what we love. That's you know, and that could come in. With, to be honest with you. That, in my Which discovery is, process, the lot next door to the east here, or at least to the right of the map, seems to be entirely unbuildable. Landlocked right. fence attached by the old right. trust. And that's what we really love about it. Right. So we want that. It's just a matter of, can we have some yard space too? Yeah, yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is that line for me is 25 feet. That 25 foot line. So. Uh, additionally, you m need to find out who's responsible for the plants. So the original order would have the developer responsible for That would be the case still. And he's going to take over your planting plant. So he's still responsible for everything, for these be, changes. So what we're trying to figure out now, and not to inject personal into your decisions, but we're trying to figure out now is, is this feasible? Because I don't want to tie Mark up any longer. We we are completely burnt, burnt out with just the whole process of figuring all this stuff out and the setbacks I've got along the way. So we just want to figure out whether this is feasible, and if it is, then great, we move forward. If it's not, then I want Mark to find someone else yeah. that you know, will be happy with it the way it was originally. I think it's a feasible project. I, mean, I think it's feasible. You, you need to know that a notice of intent, because it would be a new notice of intent, right, Chuck? Notice of intent does have its own costs associated with going through that process. Mm -hmm. So you need to know. The way, I, the way I left it with Mark in our agreement was that he would be responsible for the trees, and I would be responsible for all of it. I feel like it's, we're trying to make it ours. We are happy to take on this. Do you have any more questions? Or? I think the question, the next question should be what next, as far as? So next would be to start preparing for a notice of intent, correct? Yeah, it's an amended notice. So uh, the, you don't need the application, but you need a narrative, and you need plans. And then uh, will it, we, have to, um, we have to notify the abutters. So it's pretty much the same process. I don't think the fees are as steep, but um, it will go whenever it's ready on the next meeting, you know, two, feet, two weeks in advance. So it's the notice of intent process without the application, but a narrative explaining what you're doing. Uh, engineered stamp plans. We're definitely going to want something in writing from the town from your engineer that that wall works and they accept it, you know, they're, they're fine with it. Okay, so, then, so if you get the structural engineer involved, have it draw it, have it reviewed by engineers downstairs. Right. A good GC will be able to tie all that it stuff together It doesn't need to be a structural you. engineer. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah. But it needs, I mean, the plans in general, it, it's good, you're going to have a... Uh, yeah, we don't um, need a structural engineer. We just need to know that, uh, like Jack McCorkin, right? He could actually, if he stamps the plan and that's on it, it wouldn't it be a civil engineer anyway where it's a wall? Yeah, so it's not a structural engineer, it, it would just be a civil engineer that's stamping it. It's so tall, it has to comply with such a, it's got to have some 
It's over the height that it has Geo to be designed. Geo can't have Tech responsibility. stuff in the ground behind the wall. You can't have two people coming in. To yeah, well, that's likely going to be an MSC wall. Yeah. Developer, right. you know. So, Chuck, question for you. Is this an amended notice of intent, or is this a notice of intent? And how does that uh, mesh with the rest of the development when they come, when the developer comes for an order of certificate, certificate of, of compliance? Because a certificate of compliance will include the main road. It will include the drainage, the drainage which is the, the constructed wetlands. Well, my understanding is that you can amend an order of conditions and we are amending a portion of an order of condition, so there should be no difference in doing that. But somebody else holds the order of conditions. Yeah. Not the property. They, not, yeah. Not them. And I don't understand. You know, so that doesn't, so that doesn't prevent us from doing that as long as um, Mark Hall signs it and allows them to move forward. Oh, okay, so the arrangement between him paying for the submitting the permit if Mark agrees to it since they already have that cooperative well, agreement. That, I'm just trying to figure so out. The, the beauty about being in conservation is we don't care about money and we're not, we're not concerned no, about know, that. I'm so the, the process is going to take its play, its shape and we just need to look at the outcome. So from, from what I'm hearing, um, who's responsible if the wall doesn't you know, if, is that what you're saying? If the wall's not no, in the right spot? No, what she's saying is if, if this is an amended order of conditions, it's going to be amended to the overall Randall Road project, mm -hmm. not necessarily this property. Yeah. Not isolated oh. as lot three. Yeah. Correct. All right. So well, that's another thing Mark's going to have to agree to. He's agreeing to that okay. by signing it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So but does he understand what he's agreeing to? I'm not. Uh, we just need Mark to agree. Yeah. I, I guess is the point. Mark calls a contract on this thing? Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, it would have to be a completely separate notice of intent. Right. I don't think that would be. I mean, is is it? I mean, who, who's we, doing the wall? Who would do the, all the work? Would be my landscaper, as I understand it. Yeah. So you, you need to sort that out with Mark Hall. Yeah. So what I, I guess what I, I that was a, a yeah. good thought. I was trying to figure out who would be applying for this stuff. It right. Would have to be Mark, That's what right? I'm wondering. So Mark would apply for it, but we would do the light work, and then if it doesn't get approved, then it's. On that retaining is wall, would we be looking for an engineer cross section? Yes. H having uh, uh, Ryan review that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. and approve it and uh, yeah, uh, yeah with the memo yeah. But it sounds like they've given a preliminary approval for it. Is that true, Chuck? Yeah, the they beginning. yeah they okay. said that yeah. right. what they saw would be fine, and I was just making sure that that proximity to the cul-de-sac would be okay. Right, that would be fine. Right. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question. How would how would we do this? I mean, well, because it we were makes it e it would make it easier if Mark was here and we could figure okay. it out but, right now. But, but so the other alternative is to do what we did at our favorite. Place there, Strawberry. 16 Strawberry Hill Lane. Thank you, <laughs> Strawberry Hill Lane. Well, uh, I know that's not a clean process, but that creates two separate entities, right? So mm. a notice of intent was to propose it was mm. under a, a builder. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it that's does what get I'm messy. To avoid it gets, it gets. I just, gets I just think about oh. permit process and uh, it can. Here's. Here's what I've seen happen before. Sometimes um, a developer will come in and they will ask for a, basically a road construction with a variety of houses, and they don't know the final detail of what those houses are going to be. Um, but they have the basic layout of the road and all the drainage, and we, we hash that out with the developer, and that's where we come to that original plan, mm -hmm. where basically we think, yeah, this, we can approve this based on these conditions and these constraints and and this definitely happening and trees definitely going in and a, and a fence going in you know and all that sort of stuff and we when we approve that we do understand that homeowners come in and they're going to want it's not it's since it's just one big box everyone's going to ask for a little something different and um but when we signed off on that original plan 
we signed it off to the developer. And when he comes back, or she comes back, to ask for, to close all the work that he's done and he needs final sign off, and do we have a, a bond, maybe? So release the bond and all that sort of stuff for the developer. We have to go through his own order checklist of all the original things that he agreed to originally. So if, if your work is <coughs> layered on top of that, then we have two people asking us to say yes to two different things. Well, it would still be marked. No, you actually have even something better than that. You have one person who's finished his project saying, look, I want to be out of here. Give me my certificate of compliance. And we're right. going to say, well, this retaining wall isn't in, and that area of the lawn isn't finished, so we can't prove it unless they are going to refinance. Sometimes for us it's leverage so. for people right, that have un an unfinished laundry list to say, we're not going to prove it because the work's not done. And there's some, there's going to be some problems to the wetlands because your work isn't done. So the best way to do this, right, because we've learned from it. Strawberry Hill Road is that we'd like Mark to accept an amended yeah. order. Of That's going to be the cleanest That's way. That's going to be the to, easiest to put it on way. Mark. If and then you... You want to do it? Is it if, thank you. <laughs> if there is a, if, if Mark has an issue with this, or if there is just a general disagreement, there are other means to do it where you guys apply separately, but. And then cool. they work out between themselves. And how they, we end it, how we yeah, Mark yeah. is totally aware. So the original so, plan was for us, when we first started talking about this, this was two weeks after the offer was accepted, give or take, when I found out that there was this pitch and mm -hmm. everything. Mark was originally going to take on all the landscaping, and that was fine. And then I was going to pay for a better siding on the house, maybe better windows, whatever. And then he changed his mind. I think he started having flashbacks to the whole approval for the last three years. Didn't want to deal with it again, so I agreed to take it on. And then he was going to do a certain level of cosmetic improvements in place of that. So he's fully aware of it. Yes. That so as long, yeah. So as long as he's willing to take this on as part of that project and put it in that order of conditions, that's going to be the cleanest way to to get this proved. And Chuck can help you get that revision together. Otherwise, we're, we're separating it out and doing a brand new notice. No, that and that I think we learned that this, that's not good. Well, if if that's we if we have to start with a new notice, what we would do is we would take the conditions that were already established for this particular lot and use that as a starting place. We'd have to, because that, that, that was already pre-approved, and those conditions had. Yeah, that's not a clean way to untangle Mark from the new order. No. I, I think that what I would say is where we would do an amended order okay. of conditions and let Mark and yourselves come up with who's responsible, but we wouldn't issue the single certificate of compliance until all what Mark is responsible for and what you guys are responsible for is complete. So Mark can't get a sign-off. So you might have to... So I don't know what his concerns are. If it was me and I was a builder, it would be money. And, you know, he's expecting, when he's done, he would be expecting, you know, final payment or something like that. How that works out, I don't know. Maybe that's what you will be talking about. But for us, we want to treat it as an amended order of condition on a single lot, with, you know, with, with no kind of like... So I don't radicals. exist, essentially. Mark is still the front man, and I'm just supplementing whatever costs are incurred, essentially. Well, in the process, um, you could request the certificate of compliance. Mark doesn't have to be involved in that yep. part at all. He can go away, and you and at the very end, when everything's complete, you can on, yeah. Yeah. request the certificate of compliance. Um, and then we would go through the process looking at everything's Mark's right. half and your half. Um, the, you know, essentially, we would know that. We would just look to see that it complies with the order of condition and the amended order of condition. Yeah, because he's yeah, aware when you of So I, I think whatever the what they want. half of these resistance is from yeah. your side yep. of it, that's what we want to yeah. try and do. Yeah. I don't want to upset him because I know this is kind of... I think he's and his agent have learned a lot as this whole thing's evolved. They never looked at a lot more detail than it was originally thought. So I think it's opened up their eyes to this other way of issue anyway, so they're aware that this is the Can I ask, how is this... How is this different and how is this, what you're talking about here on Randall Road, preferable to what is happening at 1260 Main Street where all those individual houses are coming in for their own individual NOI? Not all of them, though. I 
it was only, just only two. ones that are jurisdictional. Right, yeah. So how was this different? How was this preferable versus because there the were there, because the road and the drainage was separate. So now when those two lots that are under our jurisdiction, they have to file a notice of intent. But, but the other but the other after all the road work is in. Right. In but the, the right away. The, but the, the only reason they the only reason they had lines for houses correct. was to give a calculation for drainage. For drainage, right. Yep. They weren't proposing houses. Right. They were mm -hmm. just doing a calc for drainage. But the, the otherwise the, the houses But so the, once that they, they build that cost. road and the drainage, they can come in for and apply for an uh, certificate of compliance. Right. The contract it, without contract. the other uh, houses being built, and then there are two of them that are out of our jurisdiction. They don't file with us at all. Yeah, that was considered a lot clearing and road permit, and it's likely that the last thing that's approved is the roadway. You know, after the houses, after the landscapes. You know, final, we would probably be out of the process, the final or group. you know. Before the road has been accepted, I mean, I, w I would think. Yeah. Hmm. So, Chuck, if they reach out to you, you've kind of got a, a guideline of where you can help them take a route. Yeah, I'm just trying, I'm thinking just for Dave's question. Also, the notice of intent would supersede any agreement on the roadway order of conditions right so we so that's pretty much eliminated so we wouldn't be looking at that uh, for the Commission would would make sure that that retaining wall in the back was no closer and those important things would have to be brought into the new order of conditions now if they said look we're not going to do that and we're going to build something inside of that box they could actually go with that too okay. yeah you know, because we 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 approve that. One other question that I had: I know that we had a site visit at the time that we were looking at the holly trees that yes. were on that lot. Did we not also look at the tree that he's pasture. indicating that was on that lot, the dead snag that was there? Yeah, I thought this was the one with the I real. Remember, the, uh, so many trees. One. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> so many trees. It was time. so many trees. I thought that we had discussed that at that time that we went out there. About but that tree was that tree was to, was taken was, down. Yeah, it was. that was being supposed to I remember the erosion control was like right along a line, yes. yeah. and there were two trees that we took down that were on the other side. Right. So, oh yeah, I remember these two. And so. You say it, it's still there. The tree is still standing. A no, dead tree. No, trees there's another. That are there's down. Another one. Oh, they're down on the ground. So there's, so there's a bunch that are. You shouldn't say a bunch. There's a few that are down, and then. Basically, right straight. For, I mean, this is what I understand it from where that berm is, and it's hard to figure out what's what. But what the way I understand it is that basically where that red berm is straight beyond the proposed concrete pad, there's one that's no head to it. It's just basically a, a snake. It looks like it's dead. It might be alive, free growing. I don't know. But it's a snake. Would be the word for it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So the so. I guess the, if I'm understanding it correctly, the compliance happens at the end when it's done. Hopefully it's happening all along because we're touching base and we're communicating and we're stopping by for spot invest, you know, inspections and site visits and stuff. Um, but generally the final sign off comes after the project's finished. You want to get occupancy and um, so to get the this started, so I can tell Mark that hey, we're okay. We have to file amendments and conditions, and then that entails prayer, regular mail for the final buyers. So I thought Mark was going for his foundation permits, or he's in the process. Of I that. yeah, I really hope they get in soon. And I don't know. That's I guess another question is whether or not this changes his foundation in any way. I don't know because the elevation change because what was once ground is now cut out and there's a new window there. So yeah, we're not, you know, if it's the same layout, we're not going to stop them building the foundation. That's, that's the same, you know. I so guess we just need he needs to, to move forward too, you know. Yeah. So that, that's fine. I guess we just need to know if this is doable because at that point you'd have to space it for a window. So it's a matter of figuring out 
what the likelihood of this is happening versus so the are you step. so the retaining wall is that doable or is the patio doable? I mean, certainly the patio is doable. It, the retaining wall sounds like you have your approval. It's outside the thirty-five foot. You, what's not? I mean, the, you just have to go through the process. Yeah, I think you know something like this project is is something reasonable that we would, we would go through. The neighbors, the neighbors are the neighbors very vocal. They're very, they were very vocal on this project. Yeah, and so that they come in and say no. For they, um, they, they don't have yeah. the right. To, the, the conservation commission is is here to protect the wetlands. They, they don't have a right to say no. We don't want them to build a retaining wall. So therefore, the conservation commission. They may be vocal. Disagree. They may be vocal about the the line of trees, but. That's that's been that's out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. Right. And, and so the nice it's very emotional when, when I don't go. I don't want to. I was just saying. about having rules and regulations and statutes is people don't get to influence the outcome of projects because of their personal preferences. We all have guidelines and regulations to uh -huh. follow, and that that kind of trumps anybody just saying, "Well, I just don't want it there. I take my dog over there." It's like, no, no, sorry. Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't cut it. So what? The homeowners or any of the butter is going to come in, and usually what happens is it's an emotional kind of discussion. But what's, what would work and what the commission would listen to is if, if something uh, proposed would alter or harm the habitat, that, and we didn't see it, and they brought it to our attention. So that's, that's what, that, those are the best arguments. So does the pool... You know, th some of these things have been out here, and you also have to put it with being practical. I mean, is would someone allow you not to have a patio? Uh, the retaining wall is pretty far away. I mean, I think my only concern with it, and I know the commission can't answer, was what the engineering department thought about it, because there are other retaining walls like that in town. Hmm. One, one technical piece about your plan that we have not mentioned or commented on, and I just want to mention it because it came to mind and I thought, oh my gosh, we got to mention this, is um, when all the rain hits your roof and it goes down your gutters, where's that going? What's that doing? And um, because what the Conservation Commission's not going to want to see is erosion um, into the wetlands. And you're far enough away from the wetlands to come up with a good drainage. So this is the, 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 the one that's out there. Out yeah. to that. The roof is part of the. The roof is part of the road drain that, yeah. that all goes to the wetlands. The I was retention forgetting. basin. No, there's a there's detention. that um, that. I mean, I know the cul-de-sac slopes down towards the rest of the road, right? The, the house is part of the original roads that have been done. Right, yeah. and, so and all, all of that drainage that. went into the constructed the, the wetlands. Right. Yes. Okay. Attention. I, oh, okay. That side, okay. I didn't know that part, but I brought that up to my landscaping guy, and he said that this, in his experience, that he, he's worked a lot in primarily Lexington, Winchester, those towns. He said that with the pitch that was presented, that that would be more of a risk for erosion because during heavy rains, it would just barreling down yep. the hill as opposed to leaching kind of through the grass. Right, right. the steep pitch in the grade. As opposed to. Right, right. So. Yeah, I was forgetting about the drainage. Where the rest of it would go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any <coughs> other questions? Chuck is a great resource. Oh, so. Chuck's going to be. Not just kiss the, you know, love buddy. I think you've done a lot of research. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it shows. You're, it's Chuck not that you're not going to have additional surprises, <laughs> but yeah, it's well thought out. I, I, I like it. It's like, honestly, I grew up in the woods, like, and then at the end, yes. Yeah. That, that window. <laughs> There's a little tool you got there now. Because yeah. 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 if that didn't go, they'd just block that up and, and go. That's so. my one At least it's not some of them. the week that we're supposed to close, so it's already enough of it. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Just like, <laughs> crazy. just like total chaos. Well, and if you'd seen, you saw this lot before it was taken, before it was redeveloped? I did not, know. Oh, because it, it was pretty messy back there. Was it? I haven't seen it. 
That's what it looks like for now. It's it looks very it's different. Bare. I need to drive by. <laughs> it's pretty bare. It's pretty bare, yeah. 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 yeah, it's, it's, yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Staying out late. That's awesome. Thank you guys. I know you're a problem. Chuck is there. Chuck is. Oh, what's wrong? Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, we have no minutes um, to approve. So I believe. Do you have anything else, Chuck? Yeah, I'd like to, um, I mean, Dave would be a good guy to make sure he's paying attention to this. Um, I think that the discussion we had tonight about funding the Bear Meadow property and our tree fund and where the money goes could be looked at. And what I'd like the commission to consider is having two options. For the money when you take the, down a tree, you know when people pay. So I, I, you don't have to get into it, but, but I was thinking maybe. I didn't think we got up. that money. I thought that yeah, went we, we don't to have control over the. Um, general we don't. Fund. I'm proposing so we create to create so two options because the Conservation Commission also has a uh, you know line item for donations, and I mean we've just discovered tonight that. You know, we're not really in control of some of our funds, but for donations, for people who wanted to donate into, you know, something, we might, it might, it, might, it would be another option. Mm -hmm. The other thing that comes up is that the tree fund's been great, and the town tree warden has used it, um, but we're not, we're not in control of it, and so I don't know if we're getting one-to-one -one replacement. I don't know what's happening with that money and I know things were planted up at Matera Cabin, some apple trees and then some vandals came up and messed those up and I was told that That's we're not going to do that again. That's you know, not which, do which I was that. disappointed but at. But that's what the money yeah, that is, is, yeah, for. is I mean, Ultimately, it, it, So I is mean, that the Cum Cum Slush Fund? <laughs> so, so, yeah, so some, something like that. Yeah, that's, that, really. that was my thought because I can tell you that that fund I mean, we'll call it that, brought in <laughs> Five plus thousand dollars in it's. We started in November. One of the other things. What was that? The tree thing? Yeah. I was thinking about. Well, we, was, Chuck and I were talking about this um, we don't, during our site visits. Yeah. Because uh, you know, one of the things I said is we want to make sure you know, it's not just sitting in the fund. People are there's an expectation that things are being you know, that that we're using it. To that would be great plant. if we could use some of that money. That'd be great. Well, we, we don't have control over that. But going forward, we can try. I think what Chuck is proposing is that we consider having an alternative option of a tree fund or a. Another fund. Another fund mm -hmm. that, that helps only for studies or some sort of donation type project for <laughs> things that are in the contradiction. You, you, could, you could take us out of it completely and say, you know, if, if the if maybe maybe it seems odd to say, well, you could give to the tree warden, or you could give to our fund. Maybe they would feel obligated to give to our fund, but we could actually add the, the trails committee. We could call we could it say you could give to one of these three things. You can give to the YMCA, you can give to the tree committee, you can give to the you know whatever trails committee. So the thing I options. liked the one thing I well the one thing I liked about the tree fund is the the whole intent of it was. If you couldn't replace a tree on your, your property, or you were donating money with the idea that a tree was going to get in placed somewhere else in town. Um, but the, you know, well, it and that's be the, for maintenance. That's the understanding of the tree. I'm not <laughs> saying that any any of that money was, was used for something else. I'm yeah, but, saying, but that contribution is under compulsion. That's not. We're not just saying, well, if you feel like it, write out five bucks of the tree fund. That's in lieu of being. That's in lieu of replacing a tree on your property. Correct. It's a different cost. Yeah, it's it's well, that's like I said, that I, I, as opposed to a true charity or, or or donation that says, "Oh, here's hundred bucks to what you want with it." Correct, but there's still the opportunity to find a way to develop a, a similar fund, whether it's it has to do with trees or not. I mean, well, I agree with you. I I I'm all for that. I think that's a good idea. One of the things you could also consider, especially because they want to do this at Bear Meadow, 
is to put a sign up in the parking lot at Van Meadow, right where people walk in there, to say if you'd like to donate, this, you know, the Trails Committee and the Habitat Fund is looking to to get a study done by the the Autobahn, and it's going to cost about X amount of dollars. If you'd like to donate, contact yeah. Chuck Taroni at the Conservation Commission. But you know, yeah. it's, and there's another point I want to make, and, and it was something that. I was kind of chewing on I thought I don't want to make this go any longer than it was gonna probably go was there's a big difference between management and maintenance I don't believe that the Conservation Commission should be charged with maintaining maintaining imbues you're taking care of something and that has an expense tied to that um, and I'm not certain whether that's really what the Conservation Commission's charge is you know, I think you can manage it without maintaining it. Well, right. doesn't the DPW actually do the most of the we could, maintenance? I mean, I think Kim made a great point. She's like, yeah, we can, we can do a lot of stuff, but, but what she means is we've, we have been. Yeah. And they, they just want to get, you know, confirm they're going down the right path, maybe get redirected and get, get a blueprint that will help yeah. them for the next, I don't know, 15 years. Yeah. I mean, when I first got here, we had like 15,000, 17,000 in the fund that we're that we're talking about here um, that's <coughs> that's been as low as 700 now because you know we're we each year we're giving to the town to um, offset my, my salary it's just something that's happened now doing that doesn't bother me and I know will was upset about that but the building department gives all their money the recreational department gives everything that they don't use you know for, to, for whom? to the to the general, to the general fund, fund. To, the, to, the general fund. to pay everyone the does it yeah it's just we have to they have to request it from us which I I'm not surprised and I used to work at MACC and every there's a lot of towns that do this more than 50 percent I bet actually don't allow the commissions to be in charge of any of their funds they're asking us to do this and I, and I think it's 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 good they're not trying to take all of it they're just trying to, you know, have come up with a, in a, a certain amount. But from what if somebody gave the fund that we're talking about today, mm -hmm. a hundred thousand dollars? What would the town make you do with it? You got that much money. So it's in a town that no, that but gave I, because the sometimes fund. when you take things to the extreme, it makes the stuff you're discussing the low dollar figure is very clear, and it justifies what they're going to ask you to do with it. That's why I asked the question that way. I mean, if at the end of the year, they'll let you keep it for one year, then it all goes to the general fund. Is what you're saying? You keep, you oh, get to keep I don't your know. bare minimum. I, I, I don't know. I think I think that let's say uh, a, a gas line came through and you know had a lot of and a lot of fees, and we've had projects that had a lot of fees, but we've given them back. Yeah. Um, but let's say we kept this one. It would just say I, I just I think that there would be a certain amount that we I mean sure it would it would go into separate funds pretty quickly but we could earmark some for some projects we've been hoping to do well and that's where I was kind of thinking this was going to go which is why I was going to kind of ask a, a different question a minute ago but so if you outlined a criteria for the disposal of money under the Commission's control to a limit and whatever else above and beyond that, you just willingly say, and look, we'll throw this back in the general fund every year. You might stave off the other inquiries that turn your good idea into something that now becomes bureaucracy. You know what I'm saying? Set the table and then let everybody decide to sit down at it and agree with what you've decided, and that might be a nice way to sell the possibilities of keeping control over the money that we could raise or have donated or through fees and whatnot. Just, just kind of like say, like, we, look, we're here for the community too. I don't want to be. We need X number of dollars to manage our our, our commission. Well, I don't want to leave you with the uh, um, thought that we're not in control of it. We do pay for um, the MACC conference out of it, and we've given to Boy and Girl Scout mm -hmm. things, yeah. and that's always come out of that <clears throat> that fund. But I've been aware in my head that you know there's there's so much that's needed, you know. Sure. And and to me, when I, it, it almost seems like. You know, at some point they're going to. I mean, if things go the way they are, right? so but, they're going to be asking for all of it. But so that's why I'm looking at the tree a, fund. You can write out a check against the fund, right? I mean, you can literally reach into a pocket and pull out the money and say, "This is what I'm going to do with it," as opposed yes to having to no. go into a finance committee and saying, "Here's my request for funds. Please well, see to it that that." That's, that's exactly different. right. Well, yes that's a completely no, different scenario when you think you're in control of your funds. The first one you are, and the second one you aren't. So what it takes is a vote from the commission. 
and and with that, you know, we could we could do but what we wanted. But there's restriction on what we can use it for. <coughs> there's, I mean, it's not like we can just use it for anything. No, no, but I mean, within 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 the within plausible delineation of the purview of the commission, absolutely, there should be no constraints on the money. Obviously, we're not going to go out and take everybody out to dinner or have a New Year's Eve party. And I'm not trying to be facetious, but but I understand, and as they should be, there should be some yeah, accountability right. for the use of it. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I was thinking is, you know, when he Bob was saying that, you know, what if someone said, I want to donate a bunch of money? You know, we all know that Nelson Burbank has been very generous in, in, in funding projects throughout the town of Reading. Mm -hmm. But just take, for example, the, the, the project that's now going on off of Franklin Street, right across the street from the, the cemetery. cemetery. Uh, that property, that the house that's there hasn't been torn down, but the remainder of that property was owned by one guy. Now he owned a horse, and he used to ride his horse extensively throughout Bear Meadow Conservation Area. So like, let's say for instance, if he, or even it's not out of the realm of possibility that his heirs might say, well my father so enjoyed Bear Meadow and you know, when they take the money out of his estate and fund this, this thing, and if someone came up and said that to you, how do you manage that kind of funds? Is there a vehicle for you to actually manage and earmark that fund so it doesn't get lost in the general fund of yeah, the like, town of Reading? That's well, like we, we already have a fund set up for contributions. It would probably it would go in that, but I don't know what strings are attached to it. Well, okay. that's the thing. Yeah, there's nothing to stop stop the town. I mean, besides the fact that they ask, we do have the ability to say no. Uh, so I guess that's, that's, that is it. We have the ability to say no. When they come and ask to take out of that fund to contribute to Chuck's salary, we have the, we have the right to say no. We, we just don't because it's been the process. But, but, you know, like Matera Cabin and that whole property, that was a gift to mm -hmm. conservation. You know, when the opportunity arose... The family came to the town. We got happy news that all of a sudden we are now the proud owners of some additional land and a lovely little log cabin. And that's when the wheels started turning in terms of, well, okay, now wait a minute. So, and the family said, this is explicitly for conservation. Right. Hmm. Nobody else, you know, and it's, so it's the donors' demands and their constraints that come out. And so the town worked with that and set it up. So it sounds so like it's we have some questions about the tree fund, the Matera cabin money, and you know what Kim brought up, which is our responsibility to look at some of this land. Now, I can tell you, Matera cabin has been taken over by the facilities department, and yeah. we are still renting that. So as of I don't know a couple weeks ago, we had we made like fifteen, seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, probably that closer to Who's we? Con? We Con? rent that. Well, out. I say we, as in the town. The, yeah, and well, the, Boy Scouts, they Girl call Scouts, the conservation always. office, and we rent it. They write a check to the town, and it gets it goes into a fund, which is earmarked for the Matera cabin. Before the utility, before facilities took it over, we would pay <clears throat> gas, electric, that kind of stuff with that money. The Matera cabin cost three thousand dollars a year to run that's what we found out and that's on a you know on a shoestring budget so <laughs> is that what it that's, brings you know, there's no money left you're over. operating so is there, is that, that's, Four facilities to go. that's just electricity water heat heat yeah so that's sure Sewer. they looked at shutting it down in the winter but one year the pipes froze and messed it up real uh -huh. bad yeah um john Fudo, uh, the recreation department, used to offset that money by, they have, the, the recreation department uses that like nine, 90 times a year, and we use it uh, 30 times a year. So that's, that's the current numbers. Um, he used to offset their use of it because it works for them, because it's always open, unlike the schools where they have to leave and they can't be the Saturday school, all that stuff. Uh, he used to offset that money, bringing our 17 or or 15 or 12, whatever we made that year, up to 3,000. So that's what John did for us. We don't have to do that anymore. So that rental money for birthday parties and scouts and the Ipswich uh, River Watershed Association, when they're doing a stream uh, survey class, that is 
a question mark. Where's that money going? And would that be money we can tap Isn't to start so? paying for Matera? Yeah. Uh, so so is that above the bare metal study? Okay. Is that above and beyond the three thousand that's required? The three thousand has been taken over by the town and by the facilities. We are not asked to pay for anything anymore. Okay. They they deal with it. So. It, their question seems to be, what, are, are we confident in the perception of need as presented to us from the Trails Committee and the Bird Watches that this is a viable, necessary thing? I mean, I've lived there no. for 20 that's, years. I haven't seen the metal get any smaller. You sorry? I, what? I want you to answer that. I, I, no, I'm skeptical. Um, when I asked that gentleman, you know, how many breeding pairs is this going to support, I got two breeding pairs. That's not a viable community. That's not. But he said they're promiscuous. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. So well, what? But if he thinks they're promiscuous, you should see the people that park in the cars in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> those birds got nothing on the people in those cars, and I know because they're in yeah. my backyard. Are you, you're on TV. You, you are not lying. I, I, heard. Am, I Look, I speak the truth. I've heard. You are speaking the truth. Um, <laughs> Live We're TV. Not, there's a lot of <laughs> snow. Sure. We're not going anywhere oh, near that. In, 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 in over 20 years, I've seen two woodcock <laughs> in um, Bear Meadow, and I have Labrador retrievers that I take all the time to Bear Meadow. So that's what there. they do, yeah. is they find those birds. Right. Well, right. they're focusing on, I mean, to, to say this I, is I not think viable. There are other, yeah. I think there are yeah. other species, like the bluebirds. Right, oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is going to let us know what will work so there. Here's, right. so here's I, the think, thing. I well, think there are other, whether it's this study or another study, though, I think this is, it, it's an intriguing proposition of things that, other, I think, Nikki, you said it best, other things that we can be considering and looking at. And I think we want to understand if there are vehicles and how, do we, how are we prepared to say yes if something comes in front of us that we say that is a great idea. I, I think it's but, I thought, but, I thought luck, everybody, I thought we have everybody came up with some really cogent <laughs> ideas. <laughs> but about you know what, it's what never a great idea do? to fully fund anything. I mean, oh, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, that doesn't absolutely not. Well, no, Thank you for bringing that up. Like yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're all at least at that level. Yeah, but if they if follow that, up on it. I mean, and I think their goal is to get to the next step to write the grant and get that money. I'll, I'll say this, I've been on conservation now over 10 years and this is one of the first, besides the town-wide study or a specific um, river study, like the Ipswich River Watershed study, um, you know, this is the first study that really is a, an independent look at in other words, no outside influence. Like somebody's not trying to develop this. There's mm -hmm. no. Right. Um, this is the first independent proposal for a scientific study of one of our habitat areas. And if it's anything that we really fall short on, is understanding our habitats. We I have think. someone that's looking at developing a neighboring property. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and again, we we talked about it earlier. Tying this kind of a study up in maybe a similar kind of fun or plan that would encompass all these kinds of things that we know, like they did a an owl study or a bat study. They do, they're, now they're doing a meadow study and the woodcock study. It's just I get it all. It's just but you you almost wonder if there isn't some place where. Not the town, not right now, with the physical considerations they're dealing with, but it would be some kind of catch-all that would encompass all these kinds of research, scientific studies, and evaluations that would benefit all of us, rather, or all the concerns. Yeah. Not just doing one as it comes up every now and then. But. Yeah, we could call it I the mean, you could get a study on fund. everything, and you and you're going to go crazy. I think, I think one of the things I'd like to see is any study that we would fund actually has. A next step in mind like something is going to come out of it and I think bare metal would be one I, if I had to object to something about this study because I, I think it might be Woodcock when we start but it's going to be something else there's, 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 there's going to be something else Spot they're going to say do this yeah America, this, they should look at it that's great but a lot of money and time is spent up in bare meadow and you know 
uh, Pine, Pine Vale is... Pine you know, Vale needs some help. Yeah, Pine Vale needs some help. And, <laughs> you know, it's it's a nice end of town. It's It looks good. It has the DCR that, trails that in kind it. Kind of... DCR quality trails. No, no. Kind of flies in the face of the habitat is... Like, you're out there walking the dogs. Right. right. <laughs> you're out there relieving your dog. <laughs> yeah. Trust well, me. And, and they're, they're disturbing. To, so, to and then when they're not on leash, I mean, they're, and they're not on my leash. kids were very young. I mean, I've, I've, they're beautiful dogs sometimes, but sometimes they're not. They can yeah. just, yeah. they see the kids, they want to play, they can they knock my kids over. Fortunately, my kids never developed a fear of dogs, but that happened all the time. But and I'd say, you know, you're supposed to be on a leash. I said, not that I care because you're on the meadow, but you ought to at least keep your dog out of pup. You need to keep your dog under control. Yeah, under control, absolutely. But if if a study like this comes up with specific dates of sensitive um, habitat times, you know, and we did a, you know, our one or a two week no dogs through the meadow, you know, would people follow it? I mean, that's another thing, but, 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 you know, it, it still could be used as a valuable habitat tool for how to manage it. Yep, be careful how you word it. We have activity up here in the meadow. <laughs> and we, get, and we no, got a with, spy. With woodcocks. When, yeah. No pun intended. You got to stay out for two weeks. Okay. We could call it the Reading Woodful Needs Fund. Or Meadow Needs Fund. Or something like that. Something catchy that people will say, I'll give money to that. I think there's opportunities on projects, and I can think of a, a couple recently, though, where we were looking for mitigation and, you know, if there were a fund, particularly a fund that we said this is what it's dedicated to for studies or activities like this, that you know that that is a form of mitigation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we could ask people to be to voluntarily donate to the fund. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean that would be something that would be easy to do. I also just to throw it out here when I I was reading this, I I, I guess I can scan a, a copy of this. I have a friend that's out at uh, Mass Wildlife. That's a biologist. I'd, I'd be happy to send this to, to him and just say, shop it around out there at uh, West Wildlife and see if there's any any help that can be had out there. That's, I was going to do a little bit to it and just see. Cause I, you know, I don't know that I necessarily believe the three thousand dollars either for the scope that they're looking at. So I, I want to understand a little bit more of what it would take to do something like this. But the, the trick there is you're going to start talking to a professional who maybe has some practiced mindset of what they've done on other projects or done in the past for sure. other for other things. And maybe the scope of work is close to this, but maybe it's radically different. So you're going to have to have those discussions because we, you yeah, know, no, I, I think, think this is. is a solid idea. I think the idea. Um, but Ultimately, we need to know what the requirements were for that grant, well, and, and what we do know and what we don't know, and, I have, and I have get a family what we friend need. that's on a neighbor and conservation commission. She's the executive director of NASA Audubon's executive assistant. So, and you know Talk that's to your the idea. Talk Talk to your maybe she has some funds. But Dave, your suggestion about like Essex Aggie is a perfect example yeah. Yeah. of just have them come down and kick the tires on this yeah. project, and they'll say. Absolutely, because this isn't rocket science, no, no offense. I mean, people that know what they're looking for go out there, they, they put up some flags, they do some measurements, they take some readings, and, and they put together a report that says, this is what we think. And in terms of historic use, we've got air photos, we've got historic documents, sure. we've got a lot of stuff that tells us what, how the where it was and where how it was, how big it was, and all and, that stuff. And the schools love this kind of opportunity because this is exactly the project they need their kids to be working on. Study. Sure. Well, exactly. So this, this is, is a win-win-win if you have a This is a, a STEM opportunity right. where absolutely can come in and, and have students really do the effort, or, or whether it's institutional too, I mean. Yeah. All right, Celtics win. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. All those in a second. I'll second. All those in favor. Thanks, everyone. All right. So they should make this so next. into a poster, and they should just put it on their front lawn to try and win over the neighbors. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what? The feeling is. I don't think the neighbors are going to be that bad. I don't either. No, they're not. No, they're not. That um, the um, <coughs> Although, gentleman I don't who lives who is. to the left.
He always experience. comes out and talks to us. He's so sweet. Mr. Shields? No. Uh, no, Mr. Patel. Oh, okay. This is the project's approved. That <coughs> the, the development's going in. I yeah. think the details of the development now are, my guess, beyond so that. Just to reiterate, next Tuesday at 10 15 on three site visit. Oh, yeah. So and on the 14th, uh, we're going to meet here two, at 2, 2 p.m. And is the meeting at the library? I have it here. Yes. Is three? Is it three or three thirty? It's three o'clock. Is that a, so? Are we all supposed to go to it's that? Three thirty. So let's it do it at three thirty. Two thirty. Yeah. Is the meeting at library at three thirty? Three thirty in the community okay, so, room. Okay. So. And right. that is for. I mean, hopefully open it's, meeting it's workshop. The know, library. We've all reviewed it. Library. library. No. Yeah. Okay. Three thirty to six o'clock or something. Three thirty to six. Okay. Thursday yeah. the fourteenth. Right. I saw. I just remember the time. So when is when are we meeting with regard to? Two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty Thursday. Who's right. doing that? Is it the clerk, Laura? Doing what? The open meeting law um, workshop. So far, yeah. So we so haven't. So the annual doing so I can't I'm not gonna be around to the work. But then Thursday here. Yeah. Two o'clock. Two o'clock here. Two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty here. here on Thursday. Next Thursday the fourteenth. You can come at two, yep. but I'm coming at two thirty. Can you get back in time for that? Come on. I'll be back before that. Okay. We can't do anything on the twelfth. Why is that? I turned 67 on Tuesday. Yeah. 14th Happy is my birthday. birthday. Seven. You're not going to so be able to do much after that. Tuesday the 12th is your birthday? <laughs> yeah. Happy my, birthday. Mine's We're going to be out at 11. December? Yeah. At oh, cool. So I guess three, three meetings. I guess we know what our parents were doing on December. <laughs> Thursday at 2. Um, Tuesday. Tuesday at 10 o'clock is 1503. It's 15 um, So are we... Uh, just just so that we don't have to say it when we're all standing around there. If, if there's any pushback uh, when we go out with Steve, are we just going to say we're going to ask for a third party review and just throw up our hands and say uh, that's it? No, there's actually a different thought on that. So, Anika, you on the stage. Two o'clock Thursday. Oh, here? Well, Remind me because we my brain is. Here? After our 2.30 here. 2.30. Um, Anika decided that. Oh. We'll just deny it. And then we let them we appeal. Don't agree. Let them appeal. Yeah. Okay. With who? To DEP. Yeah. That was great. Well, last time we were well, that was the conversation I had with DEP that time at Roma Lane. Is, right. Is I 